Hello again, everybody, and welcome to CTN Sports Game of the Week. I'm Nick the Jinx Wisniski with Kevin, the Mayor Bryant. Not and a we, jinx. We are at, uh, that's to be debated, we are at Riverbank Stadium where the home River Rats will be taking on the visiting Dexter Dreadnoughts. Kevin, what are we in for tonight? Points, points, points. These two teams, the last two games combined, 199 points. So they're averaging 50 and 49 and a half points between the two. But let's just slow down. The last two years, the winning percentage or winning uh, points, it's only been seven points for each team. And both teams have won on their home field. Good thing for my River Rats. Rats are looking good tonight. And coming up next, before kickoff, you've got an interview with Coach Love. So stick around for that. And then kickoff will be coming up shortly after. We'll be right back. Welcome back to CTN Sports. I'm honored to be joined with head football coach Jamonte Love. Coach, welcome. And my first question is, you know, you're going up against a squad that likes to put up a bunch of points. They're averaging 50 points a game the last two games. What's your game plan going in to slow down this team led by running back Ronnie Johnson? Game plan today is just to be disciplined on the offense, I mean defensive side of the ball. We got to shut down zero. We got to contain him. Uh, he does have some big plays, but I think our boys are confident enough to st uh, slow him down today. Well, I, I, and I hope so because you know that guy his he was money last week, and it looks like Dexter's been having like a circus coming into town. And and this week, this is the rat's job to stop it. Yeah, it's old. we're going to stop it. Um, we preached all week discipline, and basically everybody has to do their job. That's the main thing we preached all week, do your job. Well, discipline is a good word, and that's something that, uh, uh, well, first off, let's talk about your squad. I mean, offensively, I've talked about them scoring 50 points or less. Your team has enough to that par. Your, your team's only scoring 49 and a half the last two games. That's phenomenal. Can you tell us about some of the offensive players we might be able to see tonight? Oh, we're led by quarterback senior Drew Harding. Um, he's doing a phenomenal job this year. Uh, we have a senior running back by Quinn Stevens, um, Giorgio Pitts, um, Elijah Hayward, Dyson uh, Sims. They should have a big game through the air, but I'm counting on Quinn Stevens to have a big game on the, on, on the running game. Good deal, and we've, we've seen him in that first game that we covered against Skyline have a very good game. Well, over the last two years, this game has really come down to seven points. Uh, home team winning both. Uh, what's the keys to victory tonight for the Rats? Uh, to, to win tonight, again, like I keep saying, you have to do your job versus a good Dexter team. And we're coming out ready to prove that Huron is still here to compete, still to put up points, and we're just trying to, hey, believe in what we do. Well, starting off 3-0 and in the conference, that's believing in what you do the Huron way. Good luck tonight, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. And awesome work, Kevin. Thank you so much for that little 
those nuggets of wisdom down there with the coach is always super helpful going into these games. Yeah, Coach Love, man. He was around with all these guys as a freshman coach, and now he's got an opportunity to coach the varsity guys. And he's known them for so long. He's developed a good rapport with not just the players, but their parents as well. And with some of the turmoil that's gone over the Huron program over the last, let's just say, 18 months, stability is something everyone needs as a River Rat. For sure, and and he's got that that little bit of a younger touch to him, so it's a little easier for him to get in there and and relate to the players. Not that older coaches can't do it, but you know those those younger these high school kids can see somebody that's close closeish in age to them and and feel like they can relate. And yeah, Coach Love's got a great mentality about him. And here on kicking away, that was taken by uh, Cole Navarro. We talked about him a lot last week. Got a lot week. of speed on him. Yep. Yep. He's one of the receivers that quarterback Arnott is going to be looking for when he gets out of the pocket. And last week, Nick, we saw Arnott do a great job of keeping his eyes down the field when he needed to. And I say when he needed to because most of the time all he needed to do was hand the ball off to Agent Zero. And we'll see if, the, I mean, why wouldn't you start off running the ball the way that they did last week? But, yeah, Arnott, I mean, that offensive line has just created oh, create so much time I'm for I'm glad him. you said that, yeah. Look at that hole they just did right there. And there's Johnson right there, brought down. Short gain. By Fry, it looked like on the, the, the tackle for the Rats when somebody's already lost their headgear. Going to have to take an exit off Adam the field. Meredith there. You're right about that offensive line for the Dreadnoughts, though. I mean, when Johnson's not getting touched until he gets to the second level, that helps out a lot. Another handoff right up the gut for Johnson. Picks up another couple yards. Bring up third down now for the Dreadnoughts. Shama on the tackle there for the River Rats. And the, the battle you and I were talking about, Nick, is really going to be in the trenches. That Dexter offensive line, a lot of them play on the defensive line against the Huron defensive line. And I, I, that game that you called against Skyline in Huron, that Huron defensive line, they're a monster. First real test for the Dreadnoughts here. Third down, three to go on the 26-yard line. Whistle before the play. Whistle and possibly a flag back there. Looks like that might be a false start. And that's something that uh, one of us who jinxes a lot of broadcast uh, talks about the penalties. And let's just say, let's not have a big penalty night, right? No, no. Let's, let's keep things uh, flowing nicely. I mean, it's not good for anything, right? It's not fun to watch. And it's not fun to play in either. You're, you don't get that momentum going one way or the other. So, you know, keep it clean. You know, some little things are going to slip by clearly. And there's a little play action pass. Our net rolls out. Finds his man up the middle. Shot right on him. Nice job of breaking that tackle. That's holding the Emmy there. Tight end, freshman tight end. Yeah, you you were mentioning last week, this is like baby Gronk. I mean, because 12 is a large young man. And when he catches the ball, he's going upfield looking for extra. And he just shook that <laughs> tackle off from Dyson Sims. Sims tried to throw a blow on him more than trying to wrap him up and pull him down. But nonetheless, uh, he shook that off and went forward. Another one right up the middle. That time Cole Navarro with the reception. Quick passing right now over the middle for the Dreadnoughts have been successful, and it's mainly because the River Rat defense is crowding that offensive line to stop Johnson. So a smart couple of play calls there by the coach offensive coordinator, whoever's calling those plays down there by Dexter, try to get those River Rats to back off a little bit. High pass there, knocked down, did he catch that? No, uh, he's right through his fingertips. It looks like that was with 23. Was that Fry again on the, uh, uh, that missed yep. interception. We'll take a look at that play again because pressure caused that. Coming up inside was that Meredith. And was the offensive lineman playing a little bit of defense there? It, and then that was smart. He knew that it, uh, he couldn't do anything about it. He can't go out and grab that one, so he knocked Fry down. Arnett once again finds his man right up the middle, right across the 50-yard line. And this is something we saw Arnett throwing a little bit last week. He, it wasn't as necessary last week, but they're doing a really nice job of him dropping back and finding these quick slant plays. Well, you saw the answer to that. It's going to have to be pressure by the River Rats, but the composure out of this sophomore quarterback is astounding to sit in the pocket like that and drop it over the linebackers in front of the safety. Good drop. 
There's the handoff to Johnson. Johnson bounces off one man, finds his way outside. Stiff arm, but he sticks with it. Brings him down. Really nice tackle pulling to the outside there. Yeah, coming up and making that play was number two for the River Rats. Not on our roster, but that was a good job of gang tackling because taking Johnson down by one person head is a tall, tall task. That might be Dyson Sims. That's right, that's right. Got to remember him. There's Arnett once again back to pass. Plants his, fleet nicely, plants his feet nicely, finds Cole Navarra again up the middle. And this is all Navarra, this drive, right? Absolutely, doing a great job of just getting open. Well, and if you looked at last week's game against Pioneer, Dexter came out and they were just pounding the rock, right? Running the ball up the middle this week, they're, they're switching it up. Well, on that replay there, you could see Johnson, another really nice play action, another great, nice play action fake. But Johnson had that one uh, river rat coming in, nice block, and that gave Arnett that last chance. And then back to the run game. Really balanced attack when they need to do it. This is almost the time where the River Rat defense might want to call a break. I don't, I don't hate that. You I know, because every call. play has been going the Dexter way. They had one penalty, but they continually moving the ball forward towards their goal line. Dreadnought's moving forward like a well-oiled machine. 8.33 to go here in this first quarter as the sun slowly sets. And you can see that River Rat yeah, sideline. Right. <laughs> And there we've got a River Rat in on him. Arnett dodges him, still moving. That's 12 Finds again. again. But again, I want to call Arnett out on that, how he got away from Sharma's rush and still kept his eyes downfield to find his offensive man open and dropped another nice ball. The pressure will come in from the top side. And you see Johnson there gave him a lookout block. And at the end of that play, I mean, it was just a very good pitch and catch for this dreadnought offense. And Arnett did a really nice job of tossing that sidearm. This one, again, handing off to Johnson. Back and forth, back and forth. I think the five-yard line made that tackle because it looked <laughs> like Johnson was going to scroll into the end zone. And well, Turf Monster might have came up and grabbed his uh, left foot. Let's see here. Gotcha. Yeah, Nick, we saw, I'm going to give you that tackle. We saw, thank you. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take at least the half tackle on that. And that handoff to Johnson up the middle one more time, and that one is going to reach the promised land, and Dexter Dreadnoughts will score first on a really impressive drive. Yeah, that was all, I, I'd say coaching more than anything. Coaching and execution, Nick. I mean, every play, you had a, a, a lot of good performances by the Dreadnoughts, and it looks like Huron's defense were on their heels that entire drive. Well, and that goes to the just the smart play calling by Dexter. They, they didn't get in one rut in particular. They, like you said, made the River Rats guess as to what they're doing. Anytime the, the Rats moved too much forward on that uh, offensive line, that's when it was play action time. And they found either Naomi or Navarra either way. And, and yeah, Dexter's offense looks really good. It's humming along. And now it'll be time for the Rats to see if they can counter. We have a penalty on that kick. It does look like it was a penalty there. And have to re-kick this a little bit further back. Trey Coor here coming in second oh, opportunity. Oh, bye-bye. Right up the middle, that was blocked by 23. That one might have come in a little bit low, blocked by the Rats, and that's a big break for the River Rats as well. Every uh, point counts, yep, right? Yep. And, and, and that's something that you can build off of for your first offense possession, how you stop this block right up the middle too. And it looks like, because you can't touch that center guy, but squeezing through that guard hole was uh, Fry to get that block. Well, And it seemed like they had the, the Rats had two players coming in off the left and the right side of the center. And they, yeah, there's not a lot you're going to do. And, and they were rushed to get that ball down to begin with. And the Rats blocked that extra point. And when we've talked about how many close games these two have played, you know, one, like you said, one point to make a difference. Well, and you got to look at one thing that uh, Coach Love can look at, his team didn't make any penalties on that. They have to tackle better because if they come up and tackle better, maybe that will put Dexter in a third and long because a lot of those downs, Dexter, were in, 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 in that pressure, pressure situations and just outstanding quarterback play on that whole entire drive by Arnett. And you hit it right from the start. I mean, anytime you talk to a high school coach, 
the first thing that you talked uh, that they mentioned is always turnovers, turn or uh, penalties. And so that's going to be a big thing. Nice reception there. That's Quinn Stevens grabbed that one, and he is now going to take that one to the house and here on River Rats answer in a way that we wouldn't have would not have suspected. And that is the River Rats tying it up, waiting for the point act, point after. Amazing, amazing run back there. Nice start for the Rats. And that started with that block extra point because that gave that Huron sideline a little bit of momentum. And look at this. That was 85 yards to the house, and I was wondering if he got touched. Somebody touched him down back there, but they don't count that in the sport. You have to tackle him. To the house goes Stevens. Yeah, Stevens initially bobbled that one just a little you bit, but he still too, right? got it moving. Right, he, he got it off his mask but busted that right up the middle, came to the outside. He just had great vision of seeing where he needed to be, but that's also a lot about the blocking up front. Did it look like the Dexter defense overcommitted to one side because there was like nobody on the, on the right side of the defense? Right, you are. It seemed like as soon as he got to the 50 roughly and then came near side to the uh, Dexter sideline and there was nobody over there within tackling yes. distance. Coach Love, he's happy about that. And Rats were down at their home stadium for all but five minutes. Rats wearing the all greens this evening, sticking with the black mat So helmets. shouldn't that score be different? Eh, slight miscalculation there. That's okay. You like seven to seven? I don't think the Rats like it. <laughs> Not currently. Because <laughs> I thought one of them got blocked. I thought an extra point got blocked there. That's all. Yeah. Because it, if it got blocked, then it wouldn't be seven to seven. See, look how quick that is. Look at it. Whoa! Look at our guys I, in the truck. It was my look glasses. Guys in the truck. I was looking through these river rat glasses, man. You know. And now, after the rats take the lead, you can see a almost a full house over there on the home side. Same side for Dexter. Dexter travels well. Oh, travels well, and if we, yeah, I don't think we have a camera on this side, but this is jersey night over on the Dexter student section, and they have some of the best jerseys. Uh, we saw Bobby Boucher. Uh, you saw Eric Jordan. I mean, they, they, they went all out for this. We saw a Will Smith from Bel Air Will Academy. Smith? That was one of my favorites. Oh, my that's, goodness. That's solid. Get out of that's here. That's solid. I'm going to have to have a talk with that guy. Yeah, I hope it wonders he's from Philly. Rats kick it away. Good blocking up front and a really nice low tackle there. Up ends the returner. I believe that was Elmore on the tackle for the River Rats. And yeah, that was a vicious tackle right for the legs. And it just took the Dexter player down. You can see Navarre's returner once again. And yeah, just a really nice low shot by Elmore, like you said. Yeah, Elmore, yeah, but I still would like Elmore to keep his head up a little bit on that play. He went diving for some ankles. He got lucky on that one. And right, that's the thing with, with this Dexter offense, whether it's Navarro, whether it's Niemi, whether it's uh, Johnson, Arnett, whoever, you need to wrap these guys up. Yeah, you definitely. can't count on those big slinging yourself at them uh, tackles. Boy, right now, this man defense is not helping out the River Reds. You can see the defender is chasing already. Arnett knows he's throwing it to a spot. That's a 12-yard out. And the offensive player knows where he's going. The defensive player, if he's in the zone, he can see where the quarterback's throwing and come up. He's in a man. They're going back. And when you're in a man defense, you got to get pressure on the quarterback. Yeah, really great timing, Barnett. And, and you can see him taking those drops back, probably counting to a few seconds, getting his feet set and making that throw. Johnson gets past the uh, first down marker, but they've got a flag down at the 40. I'm going to say that's probably a hold. Probably a hold, and uh, they're going to get Johnson on uh, some extracurriculars at the end of the game. You can't be doing that Debo Samuel point to the first down. <laughs> this is still high school football. Well, and You just, need to wait until you get to that level before you start acting like you're on that level. And you can see top of the screen here. It might be 74. might have got a little face mask. Oh, he, he tackled him. Yeah. Uh, 76 did a great oh, job of tackling. Oh, got him down there too, yeah. Yeah, take your pick. But at the end of that play, Johnson gets up and he does the old first down pointy. And uh, two things. One, that's not going to make you any friends over the River Red sideline because uh, you're on the road. Uh, secondly, that's not the way you play the game. There's the Arnett pressure. from the shotgun. One player in on him. Arnett makes a miss. He's still got his head up looking around, takes the slide down, and 
That's going to be awfully close. I think our net and some of the sideline wants a late hit. Yeah, coming in and putting some wood was Gardner on that, Charlie Gardner. And that that play, though, was a bang-bang play because you saw our net sliding and the defender coming from the side right when he's going into the slide. So it kind of looked a little bit worse than it actually was. And Elijah Easley coming in through the A-gap like lightning. That's what they need. They need more pressure up there. And <laughs> I was wondering if we are going to get a hard count <laughs> because you saw the defense just creeping up into that A-gap. Right. It wasn't, it wasn't one dude. It was like three guys and the defensive line. They were, they were trying they, – whether they – were just a little too excited, or they thought that they felt something on the count. <laughs> they, just, they just had a lot of guys going for it there. And mission accomplished by the Texter offense there. So they'll, they'll get a, an easy five yards. That can get any easier than that. Well, and they'll have second and manageable now. We said it many times last week, discipline, discipline, discipline. That's the way the Dexter team plays. Pass up the sideline to Arnett. And they're going to throw the flag on Jackson Hayward there. A lot of contact there. Navarro took. And that'll be a 15-yarder. That's why I say every possession, throw the ball downfield once or twice, because this is what happens. Sometimes, even when the ball is underthrown, like this ball is underthrown, you really couldn't see it in that shot there. But the defensive player uh, was not seeing the ball. The offensive player located the ball, turned, and bumped into the defensive player. Well, and, you know, not every team has the quarterback that can make those throws or, or make or, or you know make you think that that's coming. But, yes, both, actually both of these teams do. So in, in these type of games, it's worth a try. You're completely correct. Every drive, you should take a shot downfield. Put the pressure on the official. Arnett now sweeping right. Under pressure, three rats coming after him. He's still looking for his man. Gets it up high but knocked away. By that River Rat defender. I believe that's uh, Dyson Sims again. It's going to be a defensive holding. It might be on the River Rats downfield. You can see there was a lot of fighting going on between the receivers and the defensive backs. And there was a penalty right down there by the 30-yard line or the 20-yard line. Yeah, and coming off the line, that was a little far past. It's not that, that little chuck that you can get away with. That is going to be another five yards for the Dreadnoughts. Five yards automatic first down. But here you can see those rats just going after Arnett. And Arnett has two guys coming up the sideline. Really nice defensive play there by the River Rats and the, the River Rats secondary. Well, and the rats are getting the pressure up the middle. They're not getting anything on the outside because they're not containing Arnett. Here we've got draw left to Johnson. Johnson does his job nicely, gets another first down for Dexter. And this is just another one of those methodical drives for the Dreadnoughts. And, Not you know, fancy. No. No, but, but it's well executed, well played, hard fought. And something else that's not to be discounted, the River Rats scored on that kickoff. This defense has been out here the Long time. entire quarter. Long time. Offensive Heron has not taken the field. 5.48 to go now here in this first quarter. Quick slant up the middle. Navarre had it in his hands, but either knocked away or just bounced out of there. I feel like that was a River Rat defender like that slapped him away. Is that Sims on the defense? He's right there coming in. Right over Great the top. Great play. Great play slapping that away. Dyson Sims there. Very good position by Sims. I mean, good position, but quick hands. I mean, that was around the side of the body. That's younger, textbook. Younger brother, Demetrius Sims, NFL player. Ronnie Johnson brought down after maybe a yard gain, hard fought yard. And you can see the better tackling from the River Rats than we saw last week out of the Pioneers. Johnson's having more of a tough time than the scrimmage he had last week. <laughs> well, I mean, and, and Dexter's de uh, offensive line is still doing a nice job pushing the Rats around and trying to get him some openings. But you're right, the tackling up the middle is just really strong by the River Rats. That is one of the strong points of this team, as you mentioned, pre-game. Pre -game. Arnett back to pass, looking for his man. Oh, that's a tough flag there, because it looked like the receiver, uh, Reckner, was about to go down. Exactly. And, and, and let's see if he was, if that defender caused him to go down. Tough to see there. Yeah, but it's tough to see. You're, you're right. It seemed like he was already on his way down or about to be on his yeah. way down. And, you know, incidental contact, but then... 
there was a lot of contact heading down to the turf. And, and that's and, what drew the flag. Unlike that first drive, the River Rats' penalties are really biting them in the foot now. Oh, definitely. You know, they've, they've had at least 25 yards here. Of penalties. Yep. All right, third down and six to go. Hands up to Johnson up the middle, and Johnson gets in there. That is going to be his second touchdown of the night. And we got ourselves a boxing match here. One of these teams is just giving you some body blows. The other one's knocking you out. Body blows sometimes will win in the long run, though. And this is a body blow. Look at this, putting your foot down in the turf and cut up field. I love north-south running. Yeah, we talked about, we talked a lot about Johnson last week. Obviously, it was a key player of the game. It was kind of his highlight reel. But a lot of north-south running, but right there you can see him. He did plant that right foot. Everybody thought he was going outside, and then he cut back up the middle because his offensive lineman gave it to him. He recognized it and then got up in the middle and scored. So, so he does have a little shiftiness to him. It's not like he's just this straight up and down guy, but yeah, he's 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 the real deal. Well, he's got play. good active feet yep. and vision. You put those two together with his strength, and that is a ugly combination if you're a defender. And and think about this, Nick. The well, as we take a look at our broadcasting schedule coming up, chock full of football. And this one got flexed. You see that other game? Gone. I, I don't know which one it was. We are here tonight at Riverbank Stadium for Dexter here on. We'll see a little bit more Dexter next week at Skyline and just again chock full of football pepper in a little field hockey for flavor and you've got a strong strong end here to CTN's fall slate. Yeah Dexter actually invited us to come down there and shoot some more of their games. I thought <laughs> we're doing the rest of them. Right well, we'll be around. That looks like Pitts that uh, grabbed that one. Really slick play by Pitts to keep his feet, keep his balance. He lost his balance a little bit, but he stayed with it and stayed up. But that was that little bit of a hesitation gave him just enough time uh, for the Dreadnoughts to catch up with him. Well, when we were talking with uh, Coach Love before the game, I, I, of course he started off with Andrew Harding, his quarterback, but he listed off a number of players that he's looking to get involved in tonight's action. So not just one player, but a multiple of players that Huron is going to be trying to gain an advantage with their offense against this De uh, Dexter D. And here we will see Harding for the first time tonight. Handoff left side. Quinn Stevens there on the handoff, got to the outside, brought down after a few yards. Stevens was the one that actually Coach Love ended with saying he's really expecting big things out of him tonight. What's that like for a player when you when your coach is saying, hey, we need big things out of you today? That's, that's a great pressure. That's like that good nervousness. There's Harding play action, finds his man outside, gets across the first down marker, and gets nearly about to the 45-yard line. Huron's players aren't as large as the, the Red Knox players are, but they sure are fleet-footed. Yeah, that's Wells. They've, they've done a really nice job here on of, of building a good, exciting offense. It starts with Harding, obviously, but they've got a strong running core, and yeah, Harding can sling it around, and they've got some guys that can, that can make you miss. There's another one to Stevens. Bounces off a couple of players before being pushed out of bounds. 45-yard line. And a good play by the offensive line for the River Reds there. You see him putting a man on a man. And just on the outside, looked like if you could have got a, a cut upside, uh, Stevens may have had a little bit more room. I think that was Nathan Gersh with the final knock to get him pushed out. Gersh, we saw him last week come up and make a lot of good plays from the secondary. Stevens again brought down in the backfield, though, this time around. They tried to sweep that one right, and the Dreadnoughts were ready for him. Yeah, it's that trailer, I believe. Uh, no, Taylor, Davis Taylor on that tackle. And that was a very good sound tackle. And we said, this is the fundamentally sound squad. Yeah, fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. That's what, that's what coaches want. That's what coaches breed in a program. And that's what you're seeing with Dexter right now. Third and 10 now to go from their own 43. Harding from the shotgun. Four wide. 
Steps up in the pocket, finds a man right up the middle, caught. And he will be brought down to the 45-yard line. Dyson Sims again on the reception, and a great job of Sims sitting in that hole and allowing his quarterback to find him directly over the middle. You can see Hardy, that was the second guy. He steps up in the pocket and drops a dime to the open Sims. Harding, quick slant out to number nine. Nine gets up another five, six yards. Jackson Hayward now. And that's, again, something else that, that Huron has going for them. They've got a lot of options to look for out there offensively. Again, whether it's the running backs or these wide receivers that are fleet of foot, just these quick little out passes could be broken for something big. And this team is not afraid of their opponent. You can tell by the style of play by the River Reds. Play action to Stevens, looking for Hayward again. And it looks like between Hayward and Stevens, there was a, a, a something was they weren't on the same page as far as that route was concerned, because it looked like the quarterback Hardy was throwing that ball a little bit shorter than that route was right, and that was one of those timing routes. 3:07 to go now here in this first quarter, third and four. This might be a run option here. Nice out to Sims. Sims, it looked like he had some space, but there was that amount of space between Sims and those linebackers was cut short real fast. Yeah, good speed on the edge there by the Dreadnoughts coming up and making that play. Sims needs to get north and south a little bit faster next time. But this is the part of the field where the River Rats definitely aren't going to be punting for, what, 10 yards? No. What's the point? What's the point? Fourth. Dyson there hands it off to Stevens, yeah. but he sees an entire pile in front of him. Tried to scoot to the right, tried to scoot to the left, but just a massive scrum in his eye line, and there was nowhere to go for Stevens. There was nowhere to go, and then when you get a slip in the backfield like that, you lose your footing. Watch this. Lose your footing. All of your momentum is not going to be able to get back into first or second gear while that defense is coming downhill on you. And the River Rats threaten here. There, they moved the ball. They did a nice job of moving the ball up. They they had some nice passes there on that drive. But Dexter defense, the fundamental, strong Dexter defense, stops them. And now Arnett back to work. Back to work. Back being chased by three rats. Arnett still keeping an eye upfield. Possibly finds his man on the edge. But I do not think that he caught that one in bounds. Did he catch it? I don't think he had both. I don't think he had both feet in. Uh, well, we only need one. So, Good point. I mean. It looked like, I mean, it was really close that he dragged that back left foot. He did grab a hammy after the play like his hamstring. Yeah, he might have got a choke wagon. Go ahead and say that that's a no catch. But here you see Arnett yeah, just running for his life immediately. But, man, just the composure of him. Keeping that eyes outfield. Heads up the whole way. Right, and despite being three able to dudes turn his shoulder him. to get the ball downfield and put it in a good spot. That yes. was still close. Oh, wow. Hand off up the middle, Ronnie Johnson. Johnson just keeps chugging along, chugging along. That's also what you love from a good running back. Those legs never stop moving until he's on the ground. Well, that's where you want somebody to come in and hit him low. Hit him low because, I mean, his legs were churning. And everybody's up here, up here. You can't hit this guy up top. This is a guy that you got to grab those legs, wrap up, and hold on until you get some help to bring him down. Well, the first rat defender that was in there tried to go low, and Johnson just made him miss and then ran into that pile. Didn't say it'd be easy. <laughs> Third and six, and everybody on the River Rat line jumps again. And this is a just a really nice thing to have in a quarterback and an offensive line to be able to get those hard counts and get these extra yards. Like it's it's just it's usually something that's beyond a lot of high school teams and a lot of high school quarterbacks. But and that's shown a real proclivity for it. Oh, in this nice. Thank you. Eight slip hard there on me. <laughs> but but, there. but I, I, I tell you. That's another play that every team needs to have in the playbook as well to a hard count because you will definitely get somebody to jump off sides once or twice. Maybe not back to back. Maybe. And the Rats playing aggressive and just a little too aggressive up on that line. And it really, it's not even that line. It's these linebackers coming in. 
trying to jump, trying to move. That's that's just, that's right now. That's where a timeout comes in handy, and that's exactly what I think the River Rats are going to get now because you just gave up a first down off of what was a third and uh, what seven. Yep. And and then you get into third and one or third and two, and then you give them a first down. Let's talk about this. Let's get some water in you guys because actually you made the point, Nick. This defense has been on the the field the entire first quarter. Yeah, they've got to be cashed out. I mean, look at look at the size of some of those kids. Like, their They're knees huge. are getting tired. Yeah. Right? Their lungs are getting tired. They're going to be breathing that battery acid pretty soon. <laughs> and you come out already hyped up. I don't know about battery acid. But you come out already hyped up for a big game. I mean, both of these, these are the top two teams in the SEC Red division. So, I mean, yeah, Selena's still out there. Here will be facing them next week. And they're undefeated as well, too. But it's a three-way tie. The winner of this game, actually, I take that back. Because Dexter's already lost to Celine, so they're two and one in that SEC red. Huron is three and zero. Oh. Dexter trying to put the stamp on this season. There's Ronnie Johnson again. Ronnie Johnson putting a stamp on this season. Cuts it back inside before that nice low tackle. Like you said, I believe that was Sims. Yeah, it looks like he was jogging. You remember the old football drill where you got to hit the tires? It looks like that's how he was picking his way through the hole. Johnson. A little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Let me take one step forward. Nothing out of control, though, here. Step in, let that block set itself up. Let that block set itself up. Be patient running. Really patient, really patient job. There's another one up the gut for Johnson. Brought down a couple more yards. I don't think he got the first down, though. We'll be looking at third and very short. And again, this is the part of the field where uh, Coach Jacobs is probably thinking, we can go for this two times in a row. Right, we've got two downs to get this one. 33 seconds to go as the clock continues to tick down on a beautiful football Friday. Handoff up the middle. Johnson seemingly got by there. He got to the 40-yard line, so that's a first down. Now I wonder, do they play clock and let this clock run out? 20 seconds there. Everybody's got their hands on their hips looking to the sideline. Yeah, now the Dexter team is getting pulled, called over to the sideline, so that might do it. And with, you know, 13 seconds coming down here at the end of this first quarter, seemingly coming down. There we can see the River Rats sideline. Yeah, see Coach Boyce, one of the old River Rat linebackers in the middle. There he is in the picture back there with his hat turned backwards, Charles Boyce. And now that clock is, in fact, ticking, and that will do it for the first quarter of play. Back and forth action here, CTN's Game of the Week. Stick around, and we're, I guarantee, more of the same coming up next. Since October 2015, Ann Arbor Inclusive has been produced by CTN and the Ann Arbor Commission on Disability Issues. The show has featured numerous guests with or without disabilities to discuss issues such as health, politics, and wellness. Thank you, CTN, for your service in providing Ann Arbor residents with the wonderful opportunity to create television programs. Congratulations to CTN on its 50th year anniversary. And welcome back, everybody, to start of the second quarter action here on CTN's Game of the Week from here on high school. Nick Wisniewski with Kevin Bryant. Kevin, tell us a little bit about that first quarter. Well, the Rats weren't able to dry dock this Dreadnoughts team. They, they were just coasting along and cruising along, and a lot of it was on the quarterback, Arnett. He was the cog that got him going this game. And now we're looking at an amazing play there by Ronnie Johnson. Johnson catching that one out of the flat, goes, makes one man miss, bowls over a second dude, and that River Rat defender had uh, half, maybe three fingers of jersey to end up bringing him down. This is a great shot here coming right at you. But look at how strong and fast Johnson is all in the same play. And 
that's kind of a mixture of both of these teams. Dexter's a strength-built team. Huron is more of a speed-built team. Nonetheless, that defensive line of Huron, they've, they've got some strong kids up there. But, yeah, it's, it's a battle down in the, trenches, in the trenches. Arnett now looking for his man down the middle. That's Navarro and a flag thrown. I wonder if they're going to call. That might have been a hold. It might have been a hold because it looks like Navarro was tangled up with Sims. And at the last minute there, you see the flag come from the back official. So he's watching everything. A lot of discussion amongst the dreadnoughts there. A lot of uh, referee discussion amongst the dreadnoughts there. Right, you are. Hold on the river rats. Let's take a look and see if we can pull it out. Was that Sims on the top there? And that was before that play, though. That's where you see the jersey coming, that, that, that yellow come out. They see some hold up there around the 10 yard I, line, I maybe? I still think it's thrown more at the, the, the flag went towards the where the uh, player was running. Well, nonetheless, more Johnson all the time. Do we get the replay of the official falling backwards, though? I think I, it seemed I like it was there. I want to grade him on that fall. There. That fall was, I mean, I'm going to give him a B. Really nice sideline camera action there. Johnson takes the handoff, bowls forward. Oh, yeah, that was, that's definitely a B minus. Brings down two rats and behind over tea kettle for the, <laughs> for the referee in there. Well, yeah, he bounced yeah, up well, pretty That would teach him to throw a flag, right? That's right. That's right. Johnson nonplussed. First and one, first and goal from the one yard line of, oh, play Great action. Play. And Great that's play Arnett. by Arnett. Bootleg off the play action, and he scampers in for the third dreadnought touchdown of this game. And that's, that, that was heads up quarterback play because that was RPO all the way. And you saw how Arnett put the ball inside Johnson's belly and pulls it away right when he sees that defensive man coming right down on him. And good wheels to make it to the outside and get into the end zone. And there was one River Rat player that did see that coming, but there's just, there's just nothing you're going to do. Arnett's not slow out there. He's pretty quick and he had a, a direct line right to the goal line. And that Look. kick, that extra point for the Dreadnoughts, no good, and that's two. two of them. Yep. 19-7 now in favor of the visiting Dexter Dreadnoughts. Here we can see this Johnson, oh, the, the RPO, as you mentioned. Yeah, all the way to the other side. You can see how uh, the here on River Rats were all cool. They were looking at Johnson thinking he had the ball. And like, I don't see the ball now. Why wouldn't you? I mean, they've been down every time they've been down there, they've just a steady diet to Ronnie Johnson getting it in there. So, yeah, to, to have that little RPO or, or play action, however you want to call it, just really nice play call. Good calling. And that's been uh, Coach Jacobs all night, right? Absolutely. And, and Arnett, just his awareness of what's going on down there is really impressive especially impressive when we talk about he's a sophomore. That's incredible. I mean, to, to, for him to, to be this poised and to be leading this team. He's not just a player out there. He's the leader out there. Well, Pitts came up and got that at the last minute, right? I think that they were I, – I was a little worried about it there for a second. Is somebody going like to go Dexter grab this one? The player was going to grab it, right? And they, I mean, they had that, that steam coming forward. It was very possible. Wouldn't have been out of the realm of possibility for a Dexter player to get there and pull that up. Uh, but that took a nice Huron bounce, and Pitts stepped up and got out to 32. And take a look at this. This is, you know, we saw just before that the ball came right back into his hands. But yeah, that ball is in no man's land, and uh, that's not a punt. That, that's a live fire. Right, and that was that was a high pop fly too. I mean, that just the way it was spinning, it could have very easily hit and bounced back towards the dreadnoughts. Well, needless to say, this is early in the second quarter, but this is an important drive for the River Reds. Yeah, if nothing else, you want to try to put a good drive together and get that offense, that Dexter offense off the field for a while. And, and maybe Exactly right. Exactly right. Harding there finds his man up the middle, and he gets popped by two Dreadnoughts, and they're going to call him for a high hit. That was definitely helmet to helmet. Goodrich came in and laid some wood on the uh, River Rat player number seven. Um, Angelo but Rivera there with the reception. Rivera did a great job of holding onto this ball. Nice pass right in the middle. 
And to have that kind of concentration, to take that hit from two players. Well, and the thing is, I mean, he knew that that hit was coming. Those is two that, players were that, so is that a, close. But is it head hunting? Did they go for his head? It was it was high. It was on his helmet. Yeah, but this, they, they give you helmets for a reason. I mean, but it, it, it look, it, 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 if they call this a penalty on the River Rat player for throwing an elbow after he just got smacked, that, that, would, that would just be insult to injury because now they're coming to the sideline and explaining it to Dexter. And I'm hoping that that's not – it didn't look that vicious to me. It looked like a very good bang-bang football play. To be fair, it sounded really hard. Oh yeah! So there was there was that aspect of it too. When you when you're plastic gonna hear plastic. Th that those big crunches, yeah. I think initially you, you, those those referees are gonna be ready to throw that. And it ball. looks like Seven has been ejected from the game. He's going to the sideline, and uh, and uh, he made that tackle a little bit too high. And Grant Goodrich, he's a backup quarterback too. Uh, he's having to take his helmet off and do a little walk of shame to the sideline. Yeah, Goodrich, they're not happy about it. Dexter fans not overly impressed by the call. No, here, we you can heard see, that. here we can see the, throw, the play one more time. Harding again with that really nice, tight spiral in there. And as that comes in. He didn't hit him in the head. I'm just saying, he didn't hit him in the head. The head got flung back because he got hit so vicious in the stomach or in well, the chest. And from that angle, you couldn't, we couldn't exactly see and I think what the referee probably saw or th thought they saw was Goodrich's helmet low and then pop, pop back, up. Pop yes. back. And it that's where the back. that's where the danger of those type of hits. Oh, I love lie. player safety first. I, I I definitely do. But you know, and we're always gonna not always, but a lot of times have some discrepancies with a rough call. For sure. But this one right here, I mean, I don't know much more that the player could do. Look, he's looking at him. And he goes up and, he, and he's laying. He, he didn't tackle him, of course. He wanted to tackle. He's throwing a forearm shiver. Nonetheless, River Rats first down, moving up. And the Dreadnoughts will play the rest of this one without Goodrich. And now the River Rats have got something going. Good field position. And we said this drive was important. And hey, they'll take it. Good blocking on the outside by the receivers on that play. Yep, Harding there finds Jackson Hayward once again. Harding looking into the sideline. Second and seven now. Oh, River Red sideline. I wonder what the, uh, the student section is getting a little hyped over there. That, this drive has woke them up. Handoff off tackle left side there by Stevens. He gets a couple of more yards, and the River Rats continue this drive chunk by chunk. And what kind of theme is it going on uh, over there? Old West Cowboys? Cowboys? Yeah, I don't know. They might Cowboys just like that Cowgirls? normally. You think, you think they're just, just racking the 10-gallon ass just, on That's the, on the, the way to ride the Rats roll. <laughs> well, but I'm jealous because that's kind of awesome. I can't, I can't pull off that kind of hat. River Rats having a good time on a perfect Friday night. Beautiful evening here as the sun goes down in Washtenaw County. Harding now a couple of quick steps back. There, another one of those really nice timing passes. That looks like Pitts again on that play, just the way he runs. Pitts comes back. He does really have that distinct look Style. to the way he runs. Yeah. And yeah, he gets those shoulders lowish. He's, he's going to come like a dart up the, up the sideline. And, and those high socks. Yep. The high socks, I mean, you can pick out the high socks. High socks and high pants yeah. make the high socks. Good enough for a first down. 9.28 to go here in this first half. Harding. Steps up, finds a man, gets through, oh, wow. and that one is off his hands and picked off by Dexter. Man, that, man, that was right in Giorgio Pitts' hands. Bounced right up into the Dexter. What was that, Gersh? That's Gersh. And, yeah. and, and now we get to see what that oh, gong, gong is for. They, oh, they hit the gong. The turnover oh, gong, the, baby. The, gong. The, turnover <laughs> gong. the turnover gong. Here we can see what led to the ah, gong. That, well, that has been a mystery for you all 
all game long. And look at that play right oh, off. Oh, what else do you want? Game. Merry Christmas right into his bread basket. And Gersh gained a few yards there as well. There's Coach Love trying to talk to Harding. I mean, that was still a solid pass. Harding has played well. Yeah. I mean, really, they, they've relied on him a lot tonight, and, and that's not his fault. And there's Johnson getting upended just shy of the first down. No, Harding, I mean, we've talked all night about Arnett, but Arnett's been on the field all night, too. Harding's been out there, and he's made really crisp throws. Oh, there we go. There we got the gong, in case you're wondering. Oh, <laughs> nice. like the gong. Very nice. The gong has to make our highlight real. Solid reverbs, even up here. Loved it. So they didn't get a turnover last week against Pioneer? Evidently not. Okay. Probably wasn't needed, actually. Arnett overthrew his target there, uh, Niemi. I think that's the first time he's missed Niemi. I mean, he's such a big kid. He, he gets that separation. He's tough to miss. Baby Gronk. Baby Gronk out there, I mean, that's what he looks like. I mean, he's bigger than everyone else. Just imagine this kid three years from now if he's only a freshman. And really nice, like, sidearm sling there by, by Arnett. We've seen a lot of different arm action from him. And Arnett throws the ball so well moving to his left, which is the hardest side for the right-handed corner, the right -handed cornerback. And here on third and very short, another flag. We're going to see if they, they got the rats on that one. And, and, and you know what? A good thing on that, and the player that jumped off might have to take a, a, a rest on the sideline this minute. But at the same time, I like the, the, the sportsmanship and the team coming up and saying, hey, we got you. That was Kais Shama tiptoeing, not quite through the tulips, but just across that line. Johnson there initially looked like he was going to go up the middle, turned last second to try to get outside, and maybe a yard or two for Johnson on that it's carry. It's tough for Johnson to get on the outside of this Rats team. They just have so much speed. He's, he's found more success going north and south and, and dodging some of them here on tacklers. Well, what does that mean with this uh, here on playing such, so much man? They, these guys are coming off their men to go and find Johnson. And they're so fast, the defensive backs, it's difficult for the Dreadnoughts receivers to apply the blocking downfield. Still managed two yards. Another play action pass. Arnett all day looking deep. What a Slings throw. that one deep up. And nearly picked off by Sims down there. But Navarre came back and played some good defense. He really tracked that ball well. Kind of hung up in the air a little bit. Looks like they were throwing a little bit into the wind. Arnett yeah. had tons of time. Yeah, and it looks like that ball just hung just a tad bit. Well, it also doesn't help that I think everybody in the stadium knew where he was going. Well, there's only one guy on that side. There's uh, one route on that side. Right, right. Boy, I wonder what it's like for our cameraman right now because the wind's starting to pick up. Getting a little breezy up there. They, they, might, be, they might be excited about it. It was warm. We had a warm uh, lead up into this game. It was warm earlier, so maybe it's cooling them off a bit. Michigan fall day. It changes. We have every season one day in fall. There's our nut top, finds his man up the middle, knocked away last second by that free safety, Angelo Rivera. Rivera with a great play, and that was the difference of the play that number seven for the Dreadnoughts got kicked out on, because look at this hit. It's solid, he goes for the football and not the player's head. Right, both of them still went up, both of them still left their feet, but you're right, he was playing the ball the whole way, very conscious of where his body is and where his body was going and knock that one away. Really nice play. So almost halfway through the second quarter, it's our first punt. Right, you are. Good call. Interesting. Rats might have smelled something on that play. They called their, they called a timeout. Well, and it's, it's fourth and eight. It's not as easy as just an offsides penalty that would give the Dreadnoughts that first down, but the Rats have been over committing a little bit so i'm sure that they have to be very aware of what's coming up see there's more there's more hats there's more uh i see more some the, cowboy hats yeah, over there I see. Hats, exactly that's fire marshal bob or bill fire it was fire marshal bill yeah let me show you something let me tell you something <laughs> i think there's even a rhinestone yes that cowboy was jim carrey folks <laughs> before he got a little too serious yeah he didn't get crazy in the end there <laughs> I like yeah, the night, though. Time. So so now, at the end of the game, we need to have jerseys 
go up against the Cowboys. Or maybe they'll do like they do in soccer and they'll switch. I, you, I, you give me your jersey, I'll give you my hat, and I'll see you next week. I can see that. I'm down well, for that. Well, it's not Pioneer. You're switching jerseys. <laughs> I'm a river. I'm good with that. Here we go, fourth and eight. Here's takes a few steps to the right, punts away. Nice low punt, very spinny, lots of. Good rugby style yep, kick there. Exactly right. Lots of torque on that ball. That one gets down to the three yard line. And if the River Rats are gonna make something of this drive, they're going to have a long way to go. And with Dexter getting the ball at the, to start the game, the Rats definitely need to get some points before this half ends. Well, the River Rats, River Rats have put together a couple of long-ish drives, maybe not quite to the level of what Dexter has done, but they for sure need to get out there, stay out there for a little while, and put together some sort of drive that gives them, you know, gives their defense a chance to calm down and, and, and take it easy over there. Well, uh, to your point, you can see when the defense had a little bit of rest, they were able to get off the field. And, and see, that, that makes a big difference when you're not playing the full quarter. That's coming up now with 7.41 to go in the shadow of their own goal post, the shadow of their own end zone. A little less shotgunny, a little more pistol look there for Harding. Handoff, easy right side tackle. And then some... And the opposite of the Dreadnoughts offensive line, the Heron offensive line just was standing there watching their running back get pummeled and not try to get in there and push the pile. I don't understand it. Yeah, there was a lot of dreadnoughts looking to make a tackle there. And look Just at the, a look lot at the rats. of them. Look at, you can see rats standing up, and your running back's going backwards. Fellas, that's not the way you do this. Still a couple of yards there for the rats. Second and seven now. Harding back to throw. Makes one man miss. That's Tosses scary. it away. It looked like he had that arm motion going oh, forward. That, that, that ball did come out forward, and you can see the official saying that, that was an incomplete pass. But you know, Harding, he has a uh, he's got he's playing with a lot of fire, throwing from his end zone, and you know, sometimes you got to let that ball go a little bit faster than you normally want to. Well, he's confident. He was stepping up in the pocket. I think he wanted to take a couple of quick steps up and maybe launch one. But that, that pocket did collapse on him pretty quickly. He just didn't have quite enough room. Maybe not, maybe not as much space as he thought he had initially. And this is, this is one where you really want to have your, your team get a first down. And that, that second play, I just didn't like the call. Harding again tries to find it up the middle. Two players. There's no flag on that. The Huron guy got tackled. Pitts got tackled before the ball. Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this. We saw Nathan Gersh in there in the middle of it again. Another good sling in there. Gersh, he might have got there. Maybe a, left a hand touch on him, early. Left hand on him, and he's going down. Maybe a touch early. He's got a hand on the back. Or he slipped, one or the other. One or the <laughs> two. I mean, when you have a hand on the back and you slip, it's usually a penalty. It's <laughs> you can't have it both ways. You can't have your hand on him and the guy falls. So to me, just like we've seen on the Dexter side have some penalties on contact downfield, that was some contact downfield and no penalty. We, to be fair, to go with your point, you're right. We, we have seen plays it's like just that. Both and, just both both yep. and, yeah, I'm looking through some green lenses. But at the <laughs> same time, that, that, that play there was such a bang-bang play and an important play for this here on drive. You would love to see because, to my point, what I was saying, throw the ball downfield every drive, that's what they attempted to do. Put the pressure on the referee. Are those glasses Hunter Green? Is that the yeah, green for here on? Is that what the, is that what the official color is? Green and gold. Green and gold. I thought it was Hunter Green and Vegas gold, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, you're right off spot on. I think the band has more of our traditional school colors. I think you're right. Punt away there. Really nice kick. Oh, what and a bounce. takes the, the proverbial river rat bounce. Navarro, though, makes a little something out of nothing, finds it up the middle, and Are he might be going me? to the house. Kick return, Dexter. Navarro, really Look at great eight. play there. Wow. And we've got a flag on the sideline here by the Dexter sideline. Oh, so it's a quick celebration or a sideline. It, it might have been a sideline infraction. You can see it was a sideline infraction. That play might come back because if the official couldn't get down the sideline, they would throw a flag. And that or did, ball, they call, did they call a warning? 
That ball initially bounced over Navarra. He gets through that scrum completely untouched. One rat gets a hand on him, but after that, there's nothing to doing after that. Boy, the sideline of Dexter coach, Coach Jacobs, is hot with the officials. He's trying to get him to move back on the sideline, and Coach Jacobs isn't having it. Still, that's six points for the Dreadnoughts. That was huge, though. That, I mean, before the half, after stopping the Rats on, on that three and out. Ensuing PAT there. That might uh, precipitate a two-point conversion. Why not, right? You've, you've, at this point, you've missed two extra points. You've got a, a healthy lead, but it's nothing too crazy. Why wouldn't you go for it, especially when you got Ronnie Johnson on that backfield? Here we can see this kick return one more time. Did he get touched? Just barely. There was one hand. He, he, somebody might have laid a finger on I don't see how he got through all that, that initial traffic. scrum. There was a lot of traffic through there. Oh, did he bow? <laughs> they're, they're getting fancy up here in Ann Arbor, this Dexter team. This Dexter team. And long point after kick goes wide left and possibly even a little bit short. And Dexter leads only 25 to 7, I have to say. Well, Trey Carr is having a bad night of kicking for the uh, Dreadnoughts. If anything is going to go wrong, let it just be the kicking because everything else is going right. Yeah, the, the Dreadnoughts have so much going for them right now where a couple of extra points uh, don't go through, maybe not a big deal. Man, that is a great home crowd for this game. Look yeah, at that view. See That's the, a Friday Night Lights view. For sure. For sure. Clouds coming in. Again, just a beautiful night here on the banks of the Huron. River Rats now waiting for their next offensive opportunity. And this might be their best play, the kick return. That's where they scored on after the, the, the first touchdown by the Dreadnoughts. Kerr back there ready to kick off. High one seemed to get caught up in the, in the jet stream there. Here comes Pitts, looking for a road. Yeah, just can't make enough men miss. But that's really aggressive defense, really aggressive special teams there by the Dexter Dreadnoughts. And it looks like Dexter's trying to turn it up a little bit, too. I, you know, a couple penalties got up under their belt, and it, 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 it's really angered some of the players out there. And uh, especially since, uh, who was that, number seven, when Grant Goodrich, when he was thrown out of the game for that, uh, that hit on the Huron player, Kind of lit a fire under the dreadnoughts. Well, you got to find the motivation anywhere you can. So, so the fact that there's these little escalations on that on that defense, on that motivation, is, is really good for them. I'm sure Coach Jacobs isn't too mad about that. And they're really dropping deep now. I think they're thinking the way that you're thinking about. It. They're going to try to try to go deep or try to at least try to take a few opportunities, yeah, chucking it, it deep. And the, the, one of the things, is a lot of time left in this quarter here, and Huron does not need to start rushing. They need to start getting first downs, start starting to make themselves feel good again. And these little passes, that's like an extended run. Yeah, I think that's the idea, and, and maybe they're hoping for something like that. Let's build on something easy, maybe make a man miss and turn it into something big. But Dexter's defense doesn't do a lot of missing. Harding now rolls out. Finds it right into the middle, picked off by number 24, Davis Taylor for the Dreadnoughts. And oh boy, there's going to be some gong. Gong show, baby. Gong show. There, there has to be a gong, right? I mean, that was an underthrown ball. Wow. That's kind of one of the better uh, celebrations Taylor I've having seen a good in a time while, there. right? Yep. The gong show. The turnover gong. That definitely had to be brought up by a coach. Oh, these yeah. These kids know nothing about the gong show. Or, oh, yeah, for sure. All right, tell me the uh, announcer for the gong show. It wasn't Gene Gene the dancing machine. I don't remember. Was it Rod Roddy? Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. There's Hardy. And just... I think he tried to get it over him, but he was ready. He got up a little bit to it, brought it down. And that's a difficult throw because he's trying to put touch on it as he's running. Yep. Yep, right. You are not an easy thing to do. 
And this will slow the Dreadnoughts down. Hide their game ball. Yeah, you got to do whatever you can, right? I'd hate to be that, uh, that ball boy. He's going to get yelled at. He took too long to get the <laughs> ball in. His dad's going to get on him. You're going to need to stay next to me next time, son, and run out there every time. No gong for you. Oh, wow. That's tough. 5.46 to go here. Our net play action of Johnson finds his man out the slant there. And that's a little bit of different defense by Heron. You can see they drop back into a zone, and just finding that open space there uh, was Navarro. And that, he just sits down in that zone. That's dangerous, though, because if, if they see that happening too much, they're just going to give it right to Johnson, and, and he can get chunks that four, five, six monster, yards with no problem. Pick your exactly. poison. And there it is. Johnson gets that one on the run, pushes forward, and gets the first down. But think about how they push forward. The entire, the entire offensive line is five yards down the field. So, I mean, that's, again, how Johnson is getting these big bursts of uh, yards. He's not getting touched until he gets to you know, six yards up. And we've talked about it over and over. He's tough to bring down. Yeah. On a good day. First and 10 now from 13 for Dexter. Hands it off to Johnson. Johnson left side. Yeah, he's nice definitely making those first guy miss every time, Nick. And even if they get a piece of him, they're not taking him down by themselves. No, that's a, that's a, that's a two-man job yeah. minimum. And these River Rats have been out there doing it all night. The time of possession's definitely been won by Dexter. But they still got some fight in them. Three yeah, rats bring him down there for a loss. That's going to bring up third and six or third and seven. Is there an injured player? Or is that just a timeout, Dexter? I think that's Dexter? just a timeout. Yeah, it looks like they're pointing timeout, Dexter. You see Johnson brought down by a gaggle of rats. What's a group of rats called? Peck. Peck. Peck, Peck rats. I get it. There it is. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, third and nine here for the Dreadnoughts. They're going to be going for it both times. Oh, definitely. There's and no kick coming up. Well, 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 definitely not that. And if I'm here, on, why wait? And I say, why wait? Put pressure. Bring pressure. Because the more time you give Arnett, the, 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 he is getting outside. He gets his head downfield. He finds an open man. Uh, and you're picking your poison, but you're causing your poison by putting pressure on that defense. But, 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 we see those rats getting a little too aggressive. How many times have they jumped off sides in, in, in these times when they have been uh, a little too aggressive? And here we got the ref talking. Uh, what could he be saying? You need to tackle more? Maybe. That ball's thrown in the dirt there. You see Arnett, he, did, he put his hands in his head on that one because that pass was open, and he know he missed it. And that's one of the things when you're watching the Huron defense playing all this man. There's nobody back man in the safety position. Everybody is man up. So you, if you lose your guy off the line of scrimmage, and these Dexter guys are so slick off of the line of scrimmage, the receivers, it's hard to catch back up. And the accuracy of their quarterback makes it even that job more difficult. Yeah, you've seen Sims a little bit roaming here and there and, and trying to be that, that athletic back, times, but he yeah. can't be in the entire, no. the entire second. And there. look at it right now. There's no safety back there, so you're just playing man-up defense, and you're not getting home to the quarterback. Toss up there into, I believe that's Navarra again. I, sorry, that's uh, holding the Emmy there. Baby Brock. And he was wide open. He was definitely wide open, but you saw they dropped into a zone there. The Huron defensive man was off of him so far that that ball was just thrown up too tall for him to get back to. Watch this. Over on the side, easy open release. And it looked like he lined up on the inside, ran out right to the pylon, and the Huron guy, if he was in zone, did not come up and pressure him at all. Though. Yeah, they knew exactly how to attack that defense. And, and, and when you say that, I think a lot of that has to do with film study. Right, you are. There's a little pitch off there for Ronnie Johnson. Flag on the play early, even before those tackles. So they're going for two, flag on the play, probably holding, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, every time it's thrown from the line judge, if it's not all sides, it's got to be holding. 
And that one will just be declined. And that's yeah. the end of that one. And here we go. Here's that touchdown pass one more time. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that's straight up film study. That's the coaches seeing and recognizing the defense that they're in, knowing that there's a little section over there that can exploit. And then the most important part, though, execution. And that comes from your players believing and trusting in the coaching, the coaching dialing up a play and trusting that their players can execute it the right way because that's a freshman out there uh, dominating, really. It's a sophomore to a freshman. Man. Craziness. Just craziness. And the star running back's a junior. <laughs> this is just going to keep coming for the dreadnoughts. Luckily, we have them next week, right? Yeah, once again, <laughs> just a nice little, nice little roll. Well, their tour of Van game. Arbor has yeah. not been fun. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Steve, that one slipped through Steven's hands. He's got to get the ball. He got it. And that might have thrown the Dexter defense, the special teams, off a little bit. Because it seems kind of glides, right? He does. He, he does really not, he's does. He's not hard runner. He's not overexerting himself. He's just gliding through there. He's like taking his time. You're like, doo, 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 doo. I got this, and they won't get me. One miss, two miss, three miss. I mean, <laughs> and half of the Dexter team just flew by. Him. Well. And definitely props to uh, Cooper Thompson there. He's the one that tied Hell him on. up. He tied him up and hung on. If he doesn't do that, if, if Stevens breaks that tackle, he might be looking for the end zone. And Harding's been doing a good job. Now we got to see some a little bit more uh, run after catch. He's open on the out. He's looking for his third guy. Now you got to keep it. That's not Smart Harding play. back there now. That's Lawrence Wells. That's number 12 back there for the Rats currently. So they're going to try to give a little bit of a different look uh, offensively. So Lawrence Wells is, uh, I, and I didn't see any big hits on Harding at all. And, um, you know, the last play was that pickoff that he threw. Right, and the, the throw was maybe not the best throw he's ever made. But I think you're right. You were just saying you've liked what you've seen from him. He's looked good. He's looked confident. And he's just hasn't had a lot going for him. He's had two real bad passes. Outside of that, though, I think he's played a, a pretty good game. I agree. Nonetheless, Wells in now. He's ready to go, and he's... Wow, look at that little just shotgun, that shot put toss out, out of there. Hand, it right? came out like a cannon. That was a rocket. And he barely, it seemed like he barely put anything into that. That was, that was a flick. Yeah, that was quite a little toss. It all starts, though, up front here, getting away from all of that Dexter pressure. Man, it almost looked like a face mask on his head, the way his head just flung backwards. I don't know if we take one more look at that, but uh, Wells' head, right when he was throwing the ball, kind of just turns backwards there at the end. And let's see, did they get a face mask on this play right? No, it's Jersey. Yeah, it was all Jersey. Jersey. Yep. Wells back to pass again. Dancing. Got some happy feet back in the pocket, but finds some open space to the right side before he's brought down and then picked off once again by the Dreadnoughts. Just unfortunate to let that go the way that he did. And he sent it right in to Connor Robeson, I believe. Yeah, we'll tell. We'll see. We'll see. Is that Connor Robeson? Robeson taking up percussion. Here's my million dollar idea. Next week, gong cam. Oh. Just throw a little GoPro down put there, it down maybe there on just the, right yeah. on the gong. Yeah, we might have some gongs against Skyline. I mean, the, the, the way this Dreadnoughts uh, team, though, they're feasting off of the Huron mistakes. And that was a mistake, right? We'll, we'll go to film next week. You don't throw that ball. Just, just eat it go down. And now Dexter back on the attack. Trickeration, Love it. Love it. as they Love say. It. Coming back to the left side. Navarro spins, stays on his feet before he's brought yeah. down at the three-yard line. And you said you love it. Too. Why? Why is that such an important because play? Why is that you, such a Because you got to design plays that are fun for kids. I mean, you don't have to execute. But when you call a double reverse, everybody gets excited. Everybody knows what's going on. Add a little trick play in there once a half as well, too. I better quit giving away my secrets. Somebody's <laughs> going to hire me as an offense coordinator. Arnett led the way on that one. Didn't throw too many blocks, but he was out there. Here's Navarro again getting rewarded after that great run. He's rewarded with a touchdown, but we're going to have a hold here. Yeah, that was a big hold right on number two, right in front of the official. That'll move him back 10 yards. 
and hopefully that can give uh, the Rats some time to maybe try to stop this uh, score. Because we definitely know the kicking game has suffered right now, is suffering for the Dreadnoughts. Watch number two here get a hold of an arm. Yeah, and he let go, but yeah, held before that. Yeah, that was that was a hold initially. You're right. He he let go. He knew where he was going. He knew. He what knew was exactly. About to happen, yeah. yeah. There isn't a time limit on holding. <laughs> <laughs> you either did it or you didn't. You either get caught or you don't. Because sometimes on every play, it's happening. And that's the thing, right? That's what everybody it's says. And, and if you're watching closely, it's happening everywhere. It's just a matter of how egregious it is and how they want to call things. You well, that guy, uh, that ref parked on the Heron side anyway. Hand off up the middle. Johnson gets that one. Falls forward. Maybe gets up another yard. Clock ticks away. 3.24 to go here in this first half. And the Rats haven't been in this kind of position all year long, really. Down at home. Down at home, just playing on their heels. Play action then, there. Arnett looking for Navarra again. Just look. Did it, I mean, I was going to say it looked like number two again was blocking uh, Jubek. No, that's not Jubek. Rector. It looked like he was blocking before the pass is thrown up on the top of the screen. Yeah. Yeah, a little and bit. He, and he's downfield. So you can't be downfield blocking when the ball's being thrown like that. Moot point because the ball was yeah. overthrown, but yeah. you are correct. You got to get any victory we can for the Reds. <laughs> Third down and goal now from the 11. Arnett makes some men miss. Look at this guy's feet. And he tosses that one to Johnson. Almost finds his favorite target there in the middle. <laughs> this kid might have been born a quarterback the way he's. <laughs> Look at the way he handles pressure, folks. He dances. He doesn't lose his composure. He's keeping his eyes downfield. And somehow, in all of that mayhem, has the confidence and the ability of his arm to throw it across his body in the middle of the field. Yeah, he, he did a nice job of, of leading that pass with his hips and getting that momentum in with his right arm. Just great play, great great fundamentals, great job of getting in the right spots. And, yeah, he almost found Johnson. Who knows where that could have ended. Boy, all these turnovers in this quarter is just really changed the whole complex of this game. You know, Rats were... You know, I want to say they were right there at 13 to, to 7. And and then the, the, this last you know quarter has not gone their way. Yeah, Dexter's deep. I mean, Dexter isn't a one-trick pony. We talked about that coming in too, right? They've got that, that big offensive line. They've got these offensive weapons. But this defense is stout, as stout as you're going to get. They've got strong linebackers. They've got a really nice defensive line. And they're fast too. They might not be flashy fast, but they're getting to those spots. I, I, it's kind of like they're a good teeter-totter. I mean, they're a really balanced team. You know, nothing, you know, extravagantly great. You know, nothing really, really, really poor. Everything above average. Yes, definitely. Here we got fourth down, now fourth and goal, Dexter. Four wide. That was a bubble screen. A double pass. Quick toss out to Navarra. Uh, looking for his man in the end. So looking for uh, Jubak there. Is that Navarra? Yeah. Navarro on the pass, yeah. he buried his head because, I mean, he knew that was his chance. That was, was his chance Well, he was going to yeah. have a 153.8 quarterback rating after that pass. <laughs> and now it's zero. It's kind of questionable. Would that ball go backwards, that first pass? It, it was really down real the line. Close on the line, yeah. Really down the line. And that was another example of what you talked about before. And let's drop a fun play. Yeah. Let's drop a fun play. Because they very easily could have just handed it off. They very easily could have went play action or, or tried to bootleg Arnett out there. But uh, drawing up a fun play like that, and it was inches away from working. And it keeps your players into the game. Yep. They don't get lackadaisical. And Hardy back in at QB. That, that pass, that whole play, though, when Hardy is going back, all of the flow and the action is going away from him towards the uh, south side of the stadium. Nobody, the running, all the receivers, all three of them, they're running away from him. Watch, as Hardy rolls to his left, nobody's coming back to help him. You got to give your quarterback a target. And, I mean, he's doing his best. He's looking for it. He's got his head downfield. 
Harding there makes that pass on the run. Turns Pitts. it upfield and gets a few extra yards. Oh, Pitts just threw a hammer down on one of the players. I'm glad they didn't call anything. It looked like he threw. Didn't he? I don't know if we saw. It looked like he was trying to get up fast or something, and the player wasn't letting him up. River White's going to try to push into the two-minute two offense, yeah. Harding running for his life. That was the, the that previous play. Before, play. Yeah. Only a poor man rush by Dexter. Harding back, looks deep, has a man. Yeah, it looks like Pitts was just sitting back there like a punt. Yeah, I mean, he was down, he was downfield, looked like he had him. Here he is, man, here's he, that he long toss thrown. down. And Pitts is behind the play. And Sims is the one that comes in and, and misses the reception or actually breaks up the interception. Yeah, and I wonder if maybe he just didn't see that coming towards him or he wanted to try to vacate a little bit away from Sims. I, I think Sims is the one that was actually thrown to and, it, and Pitts just happened to be in the area possibly. You might be right. I, I mean, S uh, Pitts might have been the one he initially saw though, Harding. Fumble. Oh, and that's a fumble and a scoop and ready to score for the Dreadnoughts. Got to get ready for the gong. Got to get ready for the gong here now. Dominic Torres finds the ball in his hands, and he's got a full head of steam pushing into the end zone. And that ball was right in the hands of the Heron player. And the next thing you know, it just hit the turf. And off to the races goes Dexter right over to the turnover gong. Turnover, touchdown. This has not been, this has been a long quarter for the Rats as well, too. It really it, is. It's just stretched out. All these passes, um, not having the clock run. But the Rats have not really gotten out of their own end zone as well, either. They've been in the shadow of it, Nick, the entire quarter. No, they've, they've had a hard time putting a drive together after that first quarter. And, and you're right. Like, you, you just wonder what the remedy will be for them. Is it to try to do a little more play action? Is it to go, I mean, they tried to go long a couple of times. That didn't really seem to be the answer there either. So they need to go into the locker room and figure out where do we go next? How do we attack this Dexter defense in a meaningful way? And Coach Love will have to lean on some of his assistants as well to help him out because they're a young coaching staff going up against an established playoff perennial coaching staff of Coach Jacobs. So it, 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 it's, a, you know, going to be difficult to say the least for the Rats to solve some of these problems that the Dreadnoughts are causing. But no problems for the Dreadnoughts there. Cooper Arnett there takes that one, makes a, just a slight little move, and shimmies his way into the end zone for the two-point conversion. So the Dreadnoughts getting some of those missed opportunity points back here late in the second quarter. Yeah, that, uh, Arnett was born to be a quarterback. Cooper. Yeah, that's a good quarterback name. Real good quarterback yeah. name. Real good quarterback name. Don't forget to visit your concessions. Dreadnoughts up 39-7 here. 2 left to go here in this first half. And this second quarter has been all Dexter. All Dexter. And the, and the Rats, it seems like they've been going forward very slowly but not sticking to that. They, they'll get four yards on the first down, and then they're starting to throw the ball deep downfield, and then they have to either get a turnover or they're punting, and that is dampering the excitement of that Huron student <laughs> section. Right. Look it's at a, that. It's about right. Those, those cowboy hats are not getting tossed around. There's no bucking Broncos in there. Nah. They're not, they're not jamming to the country music. Here we go. This might get some people moving. Might get the lassos out. Well, when you get it, when you're an up man, and then that ball comes to you as an up man, you get your chance to run the ball. Yeah, you're trying to go all upfield. That was my time to shine, yes, baby. That was my time to out shine. Out of my way. Look at 28 here. He's got his hand on the back. Get out of my way. I'm going forward, buddy. He's smart though. He <laughs> followed that block right till he needed to. He had that hand on his back. Here you go. Here you go. And now maybe the Rats have got something to build on here with 2:05 to go. We saw a lot of hurry up in their motion last time didn't exactly pay off for him, but I'm curious if they're going to try to keep that up tempo here. Now it's Coach Thompson there, TJ Thompson. He's been calling a lot of the offensive plays and seen TJ over the years. He can put together a good drive. 
Harding hands it off inside. spin a before knocked down right at the 50-yard line. That was Davis Taylor again on a big hit, number 24 coming up. And I believe that's Santana Jones on the carry previously. And this is his drive. He was the one on the kick return. Jones again gets to the outside, picks up another big chunk. That's going to be first down for the Rats. And maybe they do have something to build on here. I tell you what, though. When you look at this entire night and look at all those people over by the concession stand, they're packed. That's packed. an hour wait to get something out of there. Well, you love the Kona ice. How can you not love the Kona ice? There's Harding. Nothing to do, nothing going. So he takes it upon himself, gets outside, grabs the few You can barely yards. see the Kona ice truck. I mean, there's so many people over there. It, 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 it's a swarm of people. What are they serving over there? We're going to have to get somebody to deliver us some food. Man. I know what I'm doing at halftime. I don't see any smoke coming up, so there's no <laughs> barbecue. Harding now sends it over one more time to Santana Jones. Kinda Jones odd. has been a nice little change of pace here. I like that. Rats. I like that because he's fresh legs, and he's running with a lot of aggression. Kind of puzzling why Hardy was out for that drive. I mean, same thing. Like maybe they just try to disrupt the 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 rhythm that that Dexter defense had. Maybe try to get some people off sides. Maybe just try something a little different. The one thing I'm trying to point out is that he's coming in and doing the exact same plays. He's not doing anything differently. So it's not like he was coached up while he was sitting on the sideline watching. It might have just been a, a, a situation of hey, take he a breather. Okay. Get a rest, get an orange slice, get a water, see things from this angle, and maybe you can figure something out. Maybe you can pick apart the defense seeing it for a drive from this angle. Maybe. maybe. What do, I mean, again, what do I know as usual? I know one thing. They're letting this clock just tick on down. Yeah, happy to let this one run out probably. It's fourth down and long, so they probably want to make sure that this is the last play of the half. Yep, five wide for the River Rats. Probably take one long chuck downfield. Harding still on the run, finds a man up the middle, takes a knock, makes a couple of men miss, and he's got a dash towards Sims. the end zone before he gets scrummed up by the Dreadnoughts. And that was nearly a big play to end. The it was a big play, Here. but it was almost pay dirt to end the first half. And maybe that's the little thing that the River Rats need going into the yeah, second half. You, you would hope that they would save maybe two seconds to call another play if you're successful, but I understand totally, Nick. And that will do it for first half action here of CTN's Game of the Week. If that last play is anything we're going to build on, we might be seeing some more interesting, fun play here in the second half. Stick around. We will be right back.
Worcester Park is a 5.5 acre park close to downtown Ann Arbor in the Old West Side neighborhood. The park can be accessed from three sides, West Madison from the north, Third and West Mosley from the east, and Edgewood Place cul-de-sac from the south. There's a 500 foot paved path on an incline that connects all the entrances and many of the park's features. This is a mixed use park with a variety of amenities and attractions that offers something for all. There are several native pollinator gardens, a playground, sand volleyball court, horseshoe pit, as well as an informal soccer field. The park provides picnic tables, benches, and many grassy areas to relax, observe nature, or enjoy a picnic. Much of the park sits on a hill, which allows you to see a partial skyline of downtown Ann Arbor. For more, visit a2gov.org slash Worcester. Dana Denha, host of Ann Arbor's news magazine program, FYI. Tune in every week for new episodes featuring a variety of topics on the city and county. And welcome back, everybody. Second half action, getting ready to get going. Kevin Bryant, that first quarter seemed so promising for the Rats. That second quarter, though, Dexter, 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 Dexter gong, gong, gong. Can you sum it up any better than that one? Ugh. <laughs> if you're, if yeah, you're the Rats. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of where it was at for the Rats that second quarter. Too long and not too pretty. Nonetheless, the Rats will start off the second half with possession, see if they can build on that uh, big play after the first quarter. And there it is. Nice job by Stevens to make a little something happen. And if nothing else, the Rats are going to start this quarter off with some nice field position. Yeah, special teams has actually been one of the bright spots for Coach Love and the River Rats tonight on uh, kick returns especially. Yeah, and I believe that is Stevens. Just right up the sideline there. Not a lot of trickeration, not a lot of moves, just straight ahead waiting for players to come to get to him. But he got a solid 20, 25 yards on that return. and. Hopefully a positive for the Rats here to start off this second uh, second half. Yeah, it's, it's a new ball game for the Rats. It's time to go out and just get some first downs. Handoff outside Stevens again. Interesting, they're going back to Stevens after they uh, they had some luck with a different back towards the end of the first half. Yeah, and that, that was a rude awakening for Stevens going on the outside. He put his head down, and uh, Taylor... Davis just, I mean, I mean, yeah, Davis, Taylor. Yeah, just, just put him back. Popped it. Harding back, looking around. Had that wide out coming back to him, but just couldn't get his arms under it to scoop that one up. And that was still a late action by the uh, receiver to come back and help out Harding. Harding's backpedaling. You'd love to see more receivers funneling back towards the quarterback to give him an option. Yeah, he had that. He had one coming back, but that was about it, and Harding did his best to try to get it out to him. Nearly got it there, but just a little skip before he could get his arms under it. And third and 10 coming up here for the River Rats. Quick pass out up the middle and off the hands of Pitts. Well, Pitts is having a tough night tonight, boy. Those gloves aren't working too well. He's uh, let a couple go right through the mittens, and this is another one that Harding puts right on the money. You got to catch this one to help your quarterback and your squad out. Yeah, he even—I mean, he got him in stride. It was maybe a little high-ish, but that was still about helmet height. Yeah, it looked like Nathan Gersh was a shadow coming in and and maybe uh, that's what you know threw Pitts's concentration off there a bit. Yeah Gersh has been a shadow coming in on a lot of plays this evening. We've called his name more than a little bit. Rats go four and out here. Flag on the play right before the punt. Navarra's gonna let that one touch grass and the Rats will down it. 
And we're going to take a look and see what that laundry is all about well, at yeah, about the 41-yard line. Could have been somebody line. lined off on sides, maybe? Because where was the flag thrown? Was it on the line? Way, way up the line on the complete other side of the field from us. You can see the line reason. judge speaking with the ref pointing towards the Dexter sideline, so maybe there was not enough players on the line of scrimmage. Well, he was also giving a little kick motion there, too. False start. Wow. False start on the kicking team, so I'm curious to see what uh, the draft Now, you don't do. get an extra yardage on that. You either take the down over right. or where it was down at. I love this. Look at the two officials out there. They don't. They have two footballs, and neither one knows which way to go with it. One's, you know, holding firm. The other one's like, here, I'm putting it here. Well, let's let's <laughs> keep it, let's let's make it interesting. Let's play with them both. I sw cue the Benny Hill music. We had it last <laughs> week, where we had officials going back and forth and not knowing exactly where they wanted to spot the ball. We're good to go now. Dexter Dreadnoughts back on the attack. Arnett to Ronnie Johnson, as we've called many, many times here in the last two weeks. And have we called many, many times in the last two weeks? Johnson barrels forward and pulls up yet another first down for Dexter. And again, Dyson Sims, it looks like he took the brunt of that hit there coming from Johnson. And Johnson's a bowling ball. Well, and if you're Dexter, I don't see a lot of reason to do anything other than hand off to Ronnie Johnson. Just keep this clock moving. That's the thing. That's the biggest thing. Keep the clock moving. Arnett, quick turn, puts it into the breadbasket of Johnson. Johnson finds danger, spins away, but brought down by the River Rats. Kais Shama, I believe, on the final takedown. But there were a lot of defensive linemen and linebackers waiting for Johnson on that play. That was a good play by Shama there. And even uh, Meredith uh, looked like he was in on that as well, too. We'll go second and 17, seven yard loss for Johnson on that one. Not entirely his fault, just a, a really nice defensive play there by the River Rats. Come up big when they needed it. And they definitely need a Nick. I mean, this is one where you, on this long of a distance, you definitely don't want to give up a splash play to make it third and short. Pass into the flat, Navarra, as per usual. Cole Navarra, the other uh, sophomore, receiving that ball. Another sophomore, right? Do right. they have seniors on this squad? It's like, I mean, they did lose 18 starters. We mentioned that last week from last year's squad. But this is a young Dexter squad. Well, they've got a lot of defenders, uh, senior defenders, which is what you want. You're going to want a lot of... Uh, veterans out there and there's a long pass into Navarre. Navarre comes up with a catch. Oh. Tumbles down at the 10 yard line but an outstanding pass catch by Navarre and he nearly finds pay dirt into the end zone. Yeah and, and, and again Navarre is just he's the guy that has the speed, the wheels as well as the hands all in play. That was a good play there. And and let's see. Boy, once again, coming up, making a very good play is Dyson Sims. Yeah, Sims has been all over the place for uh, for the River Rats. They've looked nice. And here we see that long pass play just airs it out. Navarra beats his man. He's got two or three steps on it. And if he can stay up, there's no stopping him. And that from was just the a zone. perfect pass, too. Let him, put him, hit him in stride. Second and 13 upcoming here for Dexter. Johnson again. Didn't even have enough time to put the ball on the outside arm. Man, now that was the best flag tossing I've ever seen from a referee. That flag came in from the gold line. And they, they threw it over. It might be a personal foul on a late hit. Let's see on this replay if we can see it here coming in on the end. And this play right up here on the top. You can yeah. see the Huron guy come back in. And, and that's just Navarra take out getting, Navarra. The, getting the business. And was that Sharma or was that Alex Meredith, number 50? And so Navarra like still on the ground after that. that, that after that's that something you can't have. Moment. No. In a game like this, that's that's a play that you don't want to have happen. 
and you don't see even the Huron coaching staff coaching that player up. After he's made a mistake like this in the game, you want to go back over to that player if you're a Huron coach and tell him exactly what he did wrong. Right. Well, I mean, you'd think that that speaks for itself, right? When, when that happens and then you see the end result, I mean, it's not about coaching him up. It's about telling him, you, need, you can't do this. You can't do this. This is an unacceptable play, an unnecessary play. And I'm sure that the Dexter coaches are going to be screaming for that player to be ejected like the way their guy was in the first half. You see Coach Love there. He's listening to the excuse uh, from the player, but... Well, you can, yeah, you can only listen to that. You can only hear that for so long. But Navarre, that, that was, um, uh, let's call it like it is, that's a dirty play. Yeah. That's the play that does not deserve to be on the field. And if I'm a coach, and then you see 50 coming back out on the field, Meredith, why? Why? You look at the scoreboard, this is a teachable moment. Why? Why are you still out here playing? Right. This, is, this is an opportunity for him to learn more by sitting and watching other players do it the right way. No, you're you're completely right, and and you're you're curious what you're what you're getting away from this at this point, uh, uh, letting that happen. And, and Phil Jacobs down there getting held back, <laughs> rightfully so, because this this is a must-win game for Dexter, and Dexter's doing their job. Well, and yeah, like I said, they, they had their player ejected in the first half. They want retribution isn't even the right word, right? They want they want you know fair play. They want even they want even calls. And you can hear the boos coming from the Dexter sideline because as uh, Coach Love is still talking with one of the officials out there, there's no ejections on that play. No, and I'm, I'm sure Love is excited about that, but nonetheless, here we go. This should be a run. Oh, if this, I mean, yeah, but we've seen, we've seen some trickery. We've seen Arnett uh, RPO it, hold on to it, or there's that play again. Well, I mean, that's really not going to hurt. You're going to move up a half a yard. Hey, every couple of yards, every couple of yards uh, help, especially I mean, with with a back like Ronnie Johnson. Like, he's falling forward a yard and a half regardless. Like, it, it's yeah, tough to bring him up. That yep. not, not falling backwards either. Gold to go now for Dexter. There's Johnson and brought down behind the line of scrimmage. And see, this is what I'm saying. Now you're getting a little bit of chippiness out there because, there, again, there's some talking going on between these two teams. You can definitely see the body language getting a little tense and turfs out there between both squads. Right, and, and if you do eject that player, like we talked about, like maybe it was on the table that for him. That counts down. Yes, that exactly, that right. down. exactly right. Exactly right. And it doesn't look like Meredith is out there. It looks like Coach Love has him on the sideline. Arnett now ma makes his first man miss, but brought down from behind. That ball hit turf. That, that ball looked like it fumbled forward. It looked like it fumbled forward, and I don't think they're going to call that a touchdown. That looks, if nothing else, I feel like that ball. I haven't seen any. Well, it. You see the arms in the air by the official. The line judge said nothing. No line, no line judges had those hands up. Yeah, we'll, we'll hold lining. off and wait on that. I still don't know if they've caught that one a touch. I don't think they have. If they have, there's not a lot of consensus to it. Here we can see Arnett. There's that, there's Jay. He gives it to Johnson there. That was that. Uh, that was a play before. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they've lined this one back up. So that, that ball was down. Because um, you can't fumble it forward. Nope. Nope. So we'll try this again. Arnett back getting chased away. River is doing a nice job of pushing him away, but Arnett just calm, cool, collected, tries to find his man, sees that pressure coming, and scampers around into the end zone. Yeah, Sharma lost containment on his side, and as Arnett just came around, there was nobody to stop him as he walked into the end zone. Thanks, so this is that fumble play. This is the fumble play here. Ball yeah. goes down. They just called him down. He I was think. down. Yeah, Tur yeah. yeah. Turf ball call, came out afterwards. That. Yep. Johnson played it off like, "Hey, I got this. I got another TD." <laughs> yeah, because this is not too many more times. He's probably going to be out there on this field. <laughs> no, I wouldn't think so. No, nope, I wouldn't think so. 
and Dexter Pader once again turns this game 47 to 7 and after what seemed like a promising first quarter for the River Rats a nice punch counter punch game has turned into all dreadnoughts all night yeah it looked like the rats punched them back and then <laughs> that woke the dreadnoughts up because uh, after they woke up it's been uh, not a match here we see our not again just again in the face of all of that pressure he's got three four guys coming he after him even threw it too. probably so yeah, probably yeah, so guys were walking open in there in the end zone Dexter kick off out of Stevens oh. didn't do it though Stevens had to pick it up and now he's running into a, a pile of bodies some river rats but predominantly Dexter well you said it before the, the Dexter kicker uh, he's got a little funny English on that ball one time it just bounced straight up in the air it's kind of knuckleballing in the air that one was doing the same on the sideline over there I'm screaming for it to go out of the bounce because then the rats get the ball up at the 40 yard line but it just died on the on the edge there the coffin corner esque and I, I think I think Stevens felt the way you did he thought that thing was going to go out but Last second, you got to scoop it up and see what you can make out of it. And now we do, with a, a 47 to 40 score here in the second half, we do have that running clock. Yeah, because I think that last play. And, uh, that we called their uh, touchdown. That was definitely the player was down, and then they had the the. Well, that was not the two point. Was that the two point conversion it there? Must have been the two point conversion. Had to be, yeah. Had to be because they had to kick off right afterwards. So they would have would have called the fumble forward a so, touchdown right. by 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 Johnson, right? So the ball that we were assuming was down. You're correct. It did go forward. Johnson did scoop it up. Johnson did get in. And then, yeah, that was that was it. That's another another touchdown for Johnson. Yeah, I, touchdown think for the, I think the rest are not letting it in. I think they're ready for some running clock time. They want to ring that gong, man. I want to ring the gong. I think so. I got, who do I got to talk to? <laughs> who do I got to talk to? Who do I have to interview? Anyway, you have a big gold key. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, you can bargain. You can I want bargain, I want to hit the gong with the key, but also that's just my ideas. Well, when you get down there and you're talking to Arnett, you have him go over <laughs> by the... He doesn't probably want to be around the turnover dog, right? No, no. No, he wants no part of that. Great tackle. Right, you are trying to get the stiff arm up, but those, those Dexter defenders are tenacious. They're not giving it up. They're sticking with that, even in the face of a stiff arm, going around, wrapping him up, pulling him in. As Noah Pitts, senior linebacker, came up and he just wrapped him up and really took him down. Um, the the way that um, he tackled him was very sound, though. There was no breaking loose of that tackle. Here we can see the River Rats coming up again. Third and 12, third and long. Harding looking for it, just nobody to see, and that pocket collapsed on him real quickly it's like street ball out there right now for Hardy I mean and the, the side that he chose to scramble to was a side that all of the receivers weren't on all his receivers went to the right of him and he's scrambling down here to the left for his life well he knew it too I mean you can see on that replay there he was looking right the whole way he was looking for some of those guys and when it wasn't there he just busted left just maybe hoping that there was some some field open downfield if he could get past some of those defenders but that's easier said than done and now time out for the river rats it looks like they didn't have enough players out on the field and, and well nick to your point about how this match this game started off and it's gotten out of control for Huron. It, it really comes down to that offensive line for Dexter has not really allowed the defensive line uh, for Huron to take over. And we said that was one of the big matchups coming into this game was that down in the trenches, and, and Dexter's really owned it. They are. You're right. And that's that's exactly what's happened. They've, they've won it up front, both sides of the ball. And that's what you want to do. That's how you win in high school sports and how you win on YouTube. Or I'm watching on CTN. Just checking out a little more fall sports coverage. Love it. Love we have a flex game in there. That's new this year. We're always coming up with something new. Super Director Rob Cross out there. 
lining up all these matchups. We'll, we'll see this Dexter game uh, team again next week. Yeah, we're all friends now at this point, so I mean, we're, we're very familiar with yeah, the Dreadnoughts. We're I don't familiar know. with what the, what the Dreadnoughts are up to. I'm friends with a lot of people on Dexter. <laughs> Maybe not the coaching staff. Fourth and nine now. Here's the uh, Rats ready to punt this one away. A big punt. Their punter's got a nice leg on him. And that one hit. I don't know if that touched him or not. Apparently not. It didn't not. look like it, it but, but <laughs> that's living your life dangerously for letting that ball bounce right in front of you like Real that. Real close, right? Yeah, that thing, that thing could take a bounce any which way. But yeah, he kicked that from the 10 yard line. That's past, that's to the 45 in the air. Yeah, that's pretty good bounce nice afterwards foot. too. <laughs> nice foot and a solid bounce there. And, and like you said, real lucky that didn't bounce up. I mean, even just graze a knee or graze your shoe. Well, especially on these type of fields with this, this synthetic rubber up underneath, and then the ball can bounce every which way. I mean, on those old grass fields, you'd have those divots and things like that. Out here, wherever the ball bounces, it's going to have a funky bounce on it. Yeah. Yep, right you are. All right, Dreadnoughts back in action. Cooper Arnett still out there. Ronnie Johnson to his left, takes the shotgun. Arnett on the run, doubles back to his right, keeping his head up. New Just play throws this that year. one out of bounds. Well, this year you can do that and get away with uh, not taking the sack. And that's smart. It's a health uh, rule, I think, for the quarterbacks. When you're in distress like that, you can throw the ball away just like in any other level of football and not get penalized. And with the 40-point lead currently, clock's still running away. That's Coach makes the catch. Yeah, he can't ring the gong. Show for it. He wanted to ring the gong. I know that. Everyone wants to ring the gong. Pass what over to Ronnie grab. Johnson. Catches that one one-handed off of his helmet. Turns it upfield. Gets nearly to the 50-yard line. First down for Ronnie Johnson and the Dreadnoughts. Slick little catch there. How did Alex or Adam Meredith miss that? How did how did Meredith miss that? Hey, that ball went. Johnson once again has shown us just a little bit of everything here tonight. That kid's got a lot of skill. A lot of skill, great composure, speed. Here he is one more time. One hand on his helmet. That's, uh, didn't we see that in the Super Bowl? No, you're right. Meredith, Meredith was coming in on that. You thought he had the right line for it. It just was just a little out of his reach. So again, another well-placed ball like we've seen from our nut all night long. Yeah, and he never looks rushed. He always is cool. And even when he was on the, the play before that, when he's getting chased and he's running around, um, he's still head up field. Yeah, even when he is rushed, his composure is there so it doesn't look rushed. I like the way that they're still doing these plays like this because it's not running the clock up. They're running their offense. Right, right. They want to stay sharp. They want to make the most out of this time against. Huron is a quality a defense. Very good team. Right, they're a very good football team. So, so they're getting extra reps and they're working on all those things that they're going to want to be sharp going into their game next week. Going into their game next week against Skyler. Yeah, and you can start to see uh, when you look at some of the Huron defenders. Everybody's got their hand on their waist and, and a little bit of fatigue. A lot of fatigue. They've out been there. out there so long. They've yeah. been out there so much. You know, Time of possession has just been all in the favor of Dexter. Right. Dexter's put together a lot of long drives. It hasn't been these big splash plays, like you said, even though they've got it in them. Just chunks. Yep. Just chunks. And, and it. it, it, it the way they move it, everything's in unison. Yep. The line knows how long to be blocking for. The receivers, when the quarterback is scrambling, are working their way back to him. I mean, the, the, this team, they started off 0-2, uh, but they're hot now. Yeah, they're hot, and, and they're running with this momentum. And that also probably part of why, why we're still seeing this offense out there is they, they want to stay sharp. They don't want to take their guys out and then just go and get cold, right? They don't, they're not going to go under the tent and play Xbox. They want to keep them out there and, and stay strong and stay sharp and just keep this momentum going week to week. And get a lot of football reps. You, you, you were, we keep saying sophomore, junior. So a lot of these players played behind all of those starters that on a 12 and two team or something, or 12 and one team last year. So a lot of these guys, they didn't get a lot of reps. Yeah, and they're out there now, and we just had a glorious angle right on the goal line of that official 
chucking that flag. penalty flag. Just, just perfectly composed right there, the light hitting him, glistening off that black hat. Let's see this. Let's see the, the, the actual action of the tossing of the flag here. Let's see, he digs deep. Oh, wow, he's been, he's done Did you see that follow through? I you saw see that follow through? Yeah, I, he, he pointed his finger. Yep. Because he, 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 he wanted to know, and he blew the whistle afterwards before he skipped. Man. That's his sports center highlight oh, yeah. right there. Yeah. yeah. Right there. He doesn't need a gong. <laughs> uh, so 30 seconds to go here in this third quarter. Dexter's still looking deep. Harnett gets the ball looking. He's under much duress. Still has a man up in front of him, but that was picked, picked off. off there by the Rats. Full head of steam, but a big tackle from behind. Jaden Juback was the, was the guy that brought him down. That was huge. Yeah, the Rats need to come over here and ring their gong. Well, and you wonder if, if Arnett was just feeling it a little bit too much because, man, he was under massive pressure. And he I threw think he that felt into a little bit too much confidence in his arm here. Look at where he's throwing the ball. He's backpedaling, and he's throwing the ball upfield. Yeah. Into little, double cover. Yeah, a little bit too much confidence in that arm. That's Charlie Garner with the interception. But once again, great hustle by the Dexter wide receiver. Didn't give receiver. up on the play, right? No. No, it would have been really easy to just Especially with this put clock, your hands on your head scoreboard and look at it and go. Right, and as, as you mentioned, that is the end of this fourth quarter, or third quarter here, excuse me, fourth quarter action coming up here shortly. Stick around. We will be right back with CTN's Game of the Week. Congratulations to CTN on its 50th year anniversary. I'm Barbara Lucas, producer and host for the former CTN program, Green Room. Starting in August 2010, Green Room informed Ann Arbor residents of national and local environmental issues and through expert interviews, provided tips and resources for eco-friendly living. It was an honor to host and co-produce this show that served the Ann Arbor community for over a dozen years. I really appreciate CTM for providing Ann Arbor residents the opportunity to produce their own TV programs. I hope CTM will continue this wonderful service and I'm looking forward to its 60th anniversary or even its 100th anniversary. Thanks, CTM. Welcome back, everybody. Fourth quarter action for CTN Sports Game of the Week. About to start here on River Rats. Got a little something to build off of, off that interception. And it's Wells in at quarterback. Wells is elusive. Yeah, he's quick. He seems like he might be a, a run-first kind of mentality, though, however. He, he's, he gets the snap. He takes that quick look, but you can just see it in him. You can see it in his body language. He wants to go. He wants to go, 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 go. And, and, and that's when you haven't played quarterback a long time and you're not looking for your second read. You're watching that first guy. He's not open. And you're telling yourself he's not open before he's actually open. And the quarterback's turning and running upfield. And Wells is a junior, but you're right. He just might not have the amount of reps back there. Hands that one up off the middle. Up the gut. Makes one man miss, dodges off somebody else. Almost the rip move to pull him down. But that's Santana Jones again, who we saw at the end of the first half with some big plays. Yeah, he had a kickoff return, I believe, and then a couple drives after, a couple plays after that, he was matriculating down the field. But he's definitely uh, somebody that, if I'm the Rats coaching staff, I want to see him run the ball a little bit more. Yeah, can't hurt. Can't hurt, just a little bit of a different look, a little, maybe a little bit of a different running style. And it doesn't get any easier for the River Rats. Up next for the Rats is Selene. Ooh, rough. At Selene. Rough. There's Wells just over the head of Pitts. Yeah, good job by uh, number six, uh, Cole, coming in on the defense for the Dreadnoughts, getting a hand in the way. Made that ball go a little bit higher than Wells wanted to toss it. 
Wells has a little sidearm motion to that throw as well. And, and for, for the sidearm that he throws, that ball comes out kind of high, too. It did come out because he releases it way back, the long throwing action. Wells now second and 10 from the 14. Back to Santana Jones. Jones at least gets back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe another one or two on top of it for good measure. Man, if I'm, I'm the coach of staff, keep giving Jones the ball. Maybe he's getting upfield. Yeah, he's he's moving forward. He's he's taking some punishment, but he's getting through. And you can see how the Rats have uh, a couple different offensive linemen in as well, but Dexter's really done some wholesale changes. A lot of their starters are on the sidelines with helmets off now. Yeah, Dexter's definitely in that spot where where their time is, is their starters are finished. They're going to let this next group in there. Get in there, Sims. That's a touchdown. Oh, they're calling him out at the one. Are you kidding? Can't catch a break. Come on. It looked like he stuck the ball out front. Let's see here. It looked like he stuck the ball. I mean, I, again, I mentioned his brother played with the Chicago Bears and Michigan State. So he definitely has the knowledge. I should say his grandpa was my first football coach, too. Noted. The, the youth Noted. football coach, that Mr. Sims. That is some name One dropping of the nicest history men right ever. There. That's beautiful. You love to hear that. Hand off to Jones, met by, I don't know, Everybody. five dudes <laughs> at least. A solid 45% of the Dexter Dreadnoughts uh, defense. Uh, well, meets uh, right I don't middle. understand if you're going to run the ball up the middle like that, why spread everybody out? You know, jumbo up and put a man on a man and block. I just you're, you're, don't think they've got it. I don't think that they've got the experience in them yeah, to do well, it. Coaches play that don't way. coach that anymore. Yep. Jones, Touchdown. one more time, seemingly to Jones. Play action pass, and that's Wells. Cuts to the outside, and he gets into the end zone for the Rats' second touchdown of the evening. Quarterback keeper gets the Rats their second touchdown of the evening. And they, they needed that. Something good to feel about. You get the band over here to play a little bit of good stuff. And again, these guys play Celine next week, so. Quick turnaround, gauntlet of a schedule, playing Dexter and then following it up with Celine on the road. PAT forthcoming. We've got uh, some counting going on there. Yeah, Wells want to make sure he's got all 10 up in front of him. Can't hurt. Got to get the ball in the air, though, kicker. Low line drive. Wonder if the snap was on par for that one. Nonetheless, 47-13 now for the Dreadnoughts. That'll stop that running clock for a moment for the Reds. Here we can see that ball does get down a little slow, maybe. And yeah, it also seemed like it dragged his foot a bit. That Dreadnought player took it right to the jaw. That ball went right up under the face mask. Worth it. Yeah, right here on the jump here, you can see on the kick. It's coming right into that guy's face here, and his head's going backwards. I don't think he blocked it with his hands. No, he I blocked think, it I with the face. face mask. Hey, either way, you get the black PAT. You do, you do, and you get a uh, you get a bruise, which is I mean, <laughs> as a high school cool. guy, if you yeah. can walk around with a bruise yeah. on your face, I mean, you're kind of cool. Chick dig scars. Yeah. Chick dig scars. You're right. You are correct, sir. <laughs> And 8.20 now to go here in this fourth quarter. So wouldn't you be doing an onside kick, right? You, and I think you, you see Dexter yeah. starting to uh, yeah. get Hands forward team. a little bit. They're working <laughs> on that. This is, not, this, this, is, this is what you do. You kick it onside, and you try to continue to keep possession of the ball. Oh, nice Big kick. Bounce. That's exactly what Perfect. they do. You can't draw that up any Perfect. better. I tell you, the special teams for Huron has been pretty special. You're right. You're right. Uh, kicking off and, and even defensively. They've done a nice job. That was perfect bounce, Textbook. though. You want that high bounce that went right over the first guy's head? Ideal, ideal. Ideal job by uh, our camera and our replay of getting that perfectly, perfectly centered. Just delightful. Just delightful. Colors look good, too, in the exact correct Kelvin. Well, now the Rats are going to sneak back in this. A lot of time on the clock. Clock's not running anymore. All those people that are out there in the cars trying to get out of the parking lot. Hey, the game's not over. Come back, check this out. This is cool. Cool stuff's happening. Right. And Wells, if I'm the quarterback, keep doing what you're doing, son. 
because you, you might earn some extra playing time out of this. Yeah, you, you might make an impression on, on your coaching staff, and you, you might be able to stick that feather Underneath. in the cap and say, look what we did. Good pass. Really nice pass outside. And finally, you get some of that, uh, some of that elusiveness out of these here on uh, skill players. Yeah, we talked about some of that run after catch, and that's exactly what happens here. But look at this pass across the field. What a line by Wells. I mean, he padded it, and that thing came out of there. It got out of our screen because it looked like Cam Newton kind of uh, uh, spiral. Yeah, he's got, he's got some whip to that throwing motion. It's, it's a little unorthodox, but it comes it out of there. there. Fire, yep. First down now from the 19-yard line. Man in motion behind him. Fake to Jones. Toss over. That's and nice another five-yard chunk play. Well, oh, that's a nice play because it, it, it's something we haven't seen before. It showed some motion. It showed a, a, a little bit of action. Uh, that's another shot of that pass downfield by Wells. Look at the zoom. Yeah, he's got zip. And great job there by Pitts to stay up. Yeah. Going upfield, and he gets that first down. Wells doing a little bit of everything. We talked about his uh, ability to run, make people miss. He's elusive, and here is where he's especially dangerous, coming in inside that 10-yard line. Well, you know, I, I, I like the fact that they're sticking with him, even if they're uh, in the score here, because Wells is, is actually also showing Harding on the sideline what he could be doing as well, too. Yeah. That was not a bad throwaway. Yeah, it seemed like everybody, I mean, he was double covered out there coming out of that slant. So. Live to play another down. Yep. And you're playing on four downs here. So you're not playing just for three downs and kicking the ball. Even if he catches it, getting in the end zone would have been tough on that. No, there, there, that's going to be real tough to come up with that and, what, stop and turn and hope both those guys go flying by it. And there's probably still a safety behind them. So, yeah, second down now, second and goal from the eight. Wells hands that one up to Jones, That's and it. Jones fast bludgeons his way into the end zone. A great job on the offensive line. The right guard and the right tackle over there did a great job of opening up the hole for Jones to just dart through. And those are the holes that we were seeing in the first quarter that the, that the Rats were creating. And see this, look at that. Pound pancake block, really, on the outside there by 76 on number 30. Yeah, Jones saw that. He knew he was only going to have one man, and he needed to beat to that goal line, and he got there first. Two-point conversion there. attempt now. And Good job, Sims. Converted. Converted for the River Rats. Now 47-21, and the River Rats have, again, got some more stuff to build on here. Yeah, and, and this is the, the, a scary possession here for Dexter because if Huron slows them down and is able to get the ball again now you're going to have to start bringing in cold players. Players that haven't played in a couple minutes uh, just to close this game out. And maybe uh, River Rats can get lucky again on another onside kick. I mean that first kick was about as perfect as you're going to get. So if they can even come close to duplicating that I mean, and, and Dexter was Dexter was ready for they it played last for it. time. Yeah, they yeah. had the hands team up, but now you're seeing a lot of different hands teams out there. You got Johnson back deep. You, you see Regner out there, number two. They got the real hands team out there. Yeah, Jalen Juback over there, number one, another one of the wideouts. Another good bounce. Huge bounce, slapped away by a Huron player, goes into a pile. And we will wait and see who came up with that one, but I believe it is a dreadnought. Wow. Great play there by number one. It looks like the Huron player touched the ball before it went 10 yards, though. Yeah, Let's that's, take a look here. Yeah, you'll see him jump up and slap yeah, that Yeah, he away. hit it at nine yards. You can see the, the official there drop out the flag. Yeah, he was right on the 50. He was waiting for that. That's, uh, that's, he was perfectly positioned as an official. Still another good kick, though. Still awesome bounce on that onside kick. Yeah, yeah. Kid's got a future in this, maybe. Yeah. 
you know, work on that extra point kicking. But, right. Uh, hey, one thing at a time. I got you. One thing at a time. Confab out there for by the officials. Yeah, and again, now you have all that offensive line that started for Dexter. They're back out there. You got all of the, you got Johnson back in the backfield. Uh, the, the starting receivers are out there now. Here I change your defense, so I see a, a man high safety. So is the idea on that to spy on our net in case he gets away? Yeah, or to just, uh, you know, they've been, Dexter, they have been getting some chunk plays over the middle. So it's about time you switch up the defense, maybe give that quarterback something else to look at. 6.23 to go here in the fourth quarter, and there's a flag coming down. Uh, looks like Sims, there's somebody might be getting unsportsmanlike call. Well, he was jumping up and down. He was pretty unhappy. And you can see they're, they're talking it up. Yeah, and it, it looks like Coach Love's making a change. 55's jogging onto the field. Well, that was Meredith again out there, I believe. Yeah, you just want to sit him down and let him cool off. Yeah. And it right, still looks like uh, he's not wanting to walk off the field. He's know, slowly he's coming off. And, it, yeah, he's, he's not too happy about the fact that he's getting pulled out of the game. Now, there you can see Meredith. I don't know if he's, if he's John at the ref, maybe? Wow. Because, so, I mean... It, that was a happy word. Had to have been directed at the official. That 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 to me is a, again those are a couple plays that uh, fifty shouldn't be playing. No, and we can only conjecture up here, but yeah, you, you can't have your kids spouting off to an official uh, if that's what was going on. I mean, you don't want to spout off to the other team either. Spouting off to an adult, and yeah. that's that's where it starts yeah. at because these are still kids. So if you don't have enough composure to handle yourself, to not talk to the official, you haven't earned your right to put on the helmet. So Meredith out now. Johnson with the ball, cuts it up, sees it, and he gets into the end zone one more time this Ronnie evening. Johnson Ronnie Johnson. Johnson show. It's easy to be a fan. I mean, he's, he's, he's a great player. He's fun to watch, and he's successful. We've seen him do some really, really nice things tonight and last week. There's a lot to like about Randy Johnson. Out there. Yeah, it, it, it's hard to slow him down, too, because watch this. He gets hit. Yeah, just pulls. I mean, and I think 16 had the right idea there. He, I, he was not going to bring him down. Go, go for, for the, the ball. ball. Exactly. Go for the ball. But you, you, you got to go for the ball a little bit more aggressive mm -hmm. than that. That was like a two-hand touch. And another two-point conversion executed almost perfectly there by the Dreadnoughts. Jaden Juback there with the. I, I think they're going to call that reception. incomplete. The official from the top came up and just patted on the ground, so I think that might be incomplete. Well, it seemed like he caught it. Let's let's see what we and got here on the replay. You see one. He's wide open. Did it come out? I don't think it seemed. It seemed like he kept his body underneath it. He didn't even seem to be bobbling it. There's a flag on the play, play though. And there's a personal foul being called on Dexter. Not sure what the personal foul play was on that. It, it had to have been in the scrum or maybe after the play, but it looked like. There's Johnson there. Initially starts off just blocking oh, and then oh, finishes a yeah. little too strong, yeah, a little Sims, too Sims, aggressive. Sims yeah. got the worst of that, but uh, Johnson, I think that – was from the play before. Yeah. Yep. Just getting a little fed up from from uh, getting some knocks here and there where, where he feels like they, they shouldn't have been going. Well, on. you can see Coach Jacobs is still not having fun with the linesman on his sideline. He's been giving him an earful all game long. And he's, he's like following them down the sideline, not allowing the official. I mean, right at the 25-yard line, you can see him. 
Uh, and now they're separated a little bit, but Coach Jacobs, he's going to right back at him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would hate to see how he reacts on a close game if he's reacting like that on this game. I would love to have a hot mic down there to hear exactly what he said. <laughs> just, I mean, just the pantomime was honestly worth the price of admission there. <laughs> I, I think he was actually just talking about the blocking. He was showing that Johnson was engaged, and then Johnson let go of the player, and the player goes to the ground. Lawrence Wells now on this kickback. He's got the ball, and he's going up the field, and finally brought down by a Dexter player just at the 11-yard line. I tell you, these special team players for Huron, they're above average. Well, Unfortunately, they're getting a lot of opportunities. Yeah, I mean, Wells, this one of the first times that we've seen him out there doing this. But, yeah, just all the way across the field, goes up. And great pursuit by Dexter, though. I mean, look at those Dexter players taking the exact right angles to get to him and knock him out because Wells is fast. He's tough to catch up to. Well, and these Dexter players are giving their coaching staff a lot of uh, film to coach him up on on these uh, special teams because a lot of them are uh, a lot of less to be desired for the Dexter coaching staff. They'd like a better execution out there. Rats struggling to find linemen because I, I bet because of uh, some of them not being available anymore. Handoff Santana Jones up the middle. Makes a couple of men miss. Uh, tackling Bobs into a couple. That yeah. That's a touchdown. Yeah, Jones isn't going to complain. You're getting too used to Dexter scoring. Somebody, somebody's fingers just resting on that button down there <laughs> in the truck, maybe. <laughs> it's all love. It's, it's easy. It's easy to get into that that not the <laughs> rut, you know, but in that lane a little too much, right? <laughs> yeah. Not gonna call to out any piety named Carl happens McCoy or anybody. Two point conversion coming up here for the Rats. Wells from the shotgun drops back. Looking to the left, finds Jones again, and Jones cuts into the middle and crosses that end zone and, one more time. And they, you know, those two probably have played together for a long time um, on, uh, on uh, maybe the JV team because they came in together and they've been humming along. Good combination. Yeah, plenty of time for uh, Wells to get back, find that play to open up a little bit and then hits him right where he needs to be in Jones. No problem turning it upfield and, and getting in. And Jones has a nose for the end zone. He really does. He runs re really well. Yeah, he takes what the defense gives him. He's done a great job of seeing where it is and finding it. And there is our Huron River Rat touchdown. That's what I like to see. Hometown green Would love right to see a lot more of that tonight, but... They needed a few of those in the second quarter, and then this, we might be having a different that, conversation right now. That second quarter is not something the coaching staff's going to want to review. And then that whole second, first half, it seemed like the Dreadnoughts had the possession of the ball. Yeah. Yeah, they, they put together some long drives, some long successful drives. Well, here's another uh, onside Why kick not? try. Why not? Oh, he kicked a little too hard. He didn't let it bounce like yeah, he did that the first one, that one, that times. one didn't get that high bounce the way that the other one did. And, but, I mean, still, that's a line drive right at you. Yeah. It's, it's very possible for that one to, to doink off your hands or off your chest or, like, scoop between your legs. It's still still a pretty I solid I like the old school try. bouncing up the field, though. This one, he, he smash mouthed yeah, he it at hard. a guy. Yeah, he, that was he, a great he put a grab, though, by it. the Dexter guy. Yeah, he saw it. I mean, just, just like and a shortstop. He was low. He saw Put it go in his hands. It. Stay down. Stay with it. Yep. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Oh, Johnson's still out there. So is Arnett. Arnett hands it to Johnson. Johnson just shy of the 50-yard line. Yeah, the, the, these guys, you definitely want to make sure at this time nobody gets injured. Yeah, that's that's Nobody. for sure a Nobody. major concern for for this Dexter offense. This Dexter offense that has just been a well-oiled machine all night long. You don't want even even just like little stingers here and there, something that could maybe slow down uh, a player over the course of the practice. You want everybody walking off of this field completely 100% healthy. 
Johnson tries to break that one outside, but brought down by Taj Fry. Yeah, Fry's had a pretty good game, actually. He has. He's been in the mix. He's been in the mix uh, the same way that Sims has been. Dexter, of course, taking their time to snap this ball. Yeah, no rush, even though it's third and ten. Clock moving down 449 here to go here in this one. They're holding it and waiting that clock to run down, and then they get the signal from the sideline of the play to call. Well, why not? I mean, we've seen the Rats jump offside so many times tonight. Just getting a little over He knows anxious. how to buy time. Look at this guy. That one knocked and tipped up and intercepted by Elijah. Easily, easily turns it upfield. He's only got one man to beat. Cuts it back inside, and he is in the end zone, and the River Rats have scored another one. They do not go away. There's a flag on the play, though, real late. And I wonder I wonder if that one might be on the dreadnoughts. I wonder if it was a block in the back after the interception, too, because it's thrown downfield. You see Sims is down on the ground. Um, good play there, though by Elijah Haywood getting his hands up in the passing lane to cause a deflection. And here's Arnott still trying to make something happen. He comes up to that line of scrimmage, throws it tipped up, like you said, and just pulls it away, too. I love how easily he's just snipping out the goal line. Yeah, he felt good about it, and that cut back in the middle is what got him in there. Wonder what this call is going to be because it's definitely uh, doesn't look like they're going to allow that score to stay on the board. He technically has not gone up on the scoreboard yet, but a lot of discussion there with the referees. All of them, just the whole, the yeah, whole they got a good crew, crew out there. And I got to say, out of all of uh, the, the two games that we've had so far this year, this crew has thrown the best flags. They, you know, they've got the best form on their throws. I mean, well, we had the replay. We oh, the saw the velocity, the, the pinpoint placement. Proof is in the pudding. Yeah, you can't, uh, you can't deny it. We've got the tape. We got the film on it. Actually, they've they've done a good job too of not allowing this game to get out of control, which you, very easily it, it could have really could have. Yeah, they caused some good penalties on both squads. You know, a player ejected from uh, uh, the Dexter sideline. Huron, not so much, but he was taken off of the, the field of play for a couple plays. Look at how crisp that shot is. That yeah, shot is just clean. perfection. Perfection. Crisp Filling foreground, that background, that, that beautiful focus. depth of oh, field. Oh, so good. Yeah. So good. Uh, as all of our camera guys here at CTN Sports are, I want to thank everybody out there running camera tonight. You've got Katsumi Nagai, Ken Simpson, and Jelani Embry in the truck. Jacob Smith on audio replay, and of course, Rob Cross calling the shots down there as our director. I'm Nick Wisniewski with Kevin Bryant bringing you all the action here for CTN's Game of the Week. Boy, this is a lull in the action. It's action. I, 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 that word came out of my mouth, and I'm like, they're just still standing down there. I mean, they're, they're, they're trying to explain the call off to both sides. I've never seen anything going up to the press box. Maybe the official's going to give us a signal. Oh, now. can they tell us? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's got his back to us, so it looks like a face mask. I'm going to say a face mask, but he's pointing on both sides. There were two, so uh, and so offsetting penalties then? Not on, a, uh, not on a turnover like that. There's a face mask. There's a face mask. On the returning team. Yeah, we really need to mic these guys up. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> they get enough air time. I like you. That's fine. I like you. So that touchdown did not go up on the scoreboard, will not go up on the scoreboard. We'll have another offensive set here by the River Rats, presumably led by Wells again. And this is not the way the Dreadnoughts would like to end this ball game either. They're giving up points, and, and maybe not to your first string team, but you're still putting up points, and you're, not, you're, you're winning this game in a sloppy fashion. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not crossing the finish line. In a, in a strong way. No. Because the first three quarters of this game were so crisp. Yeah. So so to not finish up as strong as you'd like, that's that's going to be a frustration point. And that's going to be something for the coaches to talk about all week long. You know, whether it's conditioning, whether it's it's staying mentally engaged, whatever it might be. 
Wells will just hand it off to Jones. Jones brought down behind the line of scrimmage on that one, though. Wells, a little pointy, a little pointy. Yeah. Looks like Sean White coming in there and laid some wood and upset some people. The Dreadnought number 16 for the Dreadnoughts. Safety. Second and long upcoming from roughly the 33-yard line is where the Rats will scrimmage from. So you can even see on the snap on that last sheet. Look at the way the, the center holds the ball. He flips it back there. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of a different, uh, little bit of a different action yeah. all around. <laughs> Uh-oh, uh-oh. Wells looking downfield, wisely just eats that one, though, rather than making that throw where we've seen him do in the past. I just want to counter that, Nick, by saying we said this earlier, the rules have changed. You can throw the ball away as long as you're outside the tackle box. He's outside the tackle box where he, 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 he looked like he was going to let it go. Thought about it way too long, though. You got to hit that one in the stands. Yeah, I, but that's what that's the thing. I don't think he was thinking, let me throw this away. I think no. he was thinking, let me chuck this down Downfield. to that dude down there. Yes, exactly right. So, again, one, one more option for him. Just eat it. Still the, the, a, a correct decision. Yes. Didn't if you, turn if the you, ball over. Right. If you've got three options, that one's still okay. What do they say uh, when you throw the ball, three bad things can happen, only one good thing, something <laughs> like that? Wells under pressure coming up that middle. Boy, he Cameron do there. Got that one off the shoulder pads. Yeah, you got to use open your man. hands. Yep. Look at, look, you can see on the replay, Nick, and this gets right to his body real fast. And you said Wells flicks that ball. Real fast are the optimal words there. He zings that one in. I think Dude just wasn't ready for it. Yeah. Yeah, he was He was turned to it. He was square to it, and it hit him in a, in a catchable location. But, yeah, that one came in real fast. So, all right, time to go offensive coordinator again. Yeah, yeah, fourth and 20 is tough. So do a hook and ladder. Fourth and 20 is tough. I want That's, that, is, that is the statement of the night. Nonetheless, finds oh. almost found an open player. Almost found Jones Again. cutting up the middle, Again. which could have been a first down. Jones coming out of the backfield. That, that's always a, a tough play for a defender, that, that, that running back coming in there making a move. Oh, this is a scary feeling. That ball is in front of you, and you're reaching out when you know there's a safety lurking. Yeah. It's not alligator arms either. That, that's just smart. <laughs> well, I mean, Jones is a tough kid. I think that one was still just a little bit out of his reach. Now this is the time where we see no numbers that are recognizable running out there on the field. Now it looks like we've got uh, maybe number 15, Mason McAllister in at QB for the Dreadnoughts. And even for the Rats, a lot of folks that, you know, thankfully so are getting some PT now. I think that's number 32, Jack Vota. We saw him a little bit last week too. He's still yeah. a, a really solid runner, a nice complement to what Ronnie Johnson brings. Two fourteen to go, and the Reds, or sorry, the Dreadnoughts, they're going to keep the ball on the ground here these last two minutes, right? Oh, like definitely. You, you can't no, see no, them. no more passing. Even, in, even in the deep. spread formation with this uh, second quarterback, this is, you know, run it. They get one first down, the game's over, actually. So, I mean, this is this is uh, probably the second and last offensive play because you can take it all the way down, call a timeout, and then do another play. And Coach Jacobs has been around for a while. He's, he's knows to let this play clock run all the way down. Well, of course they throw a pass when we said they're not going to throw a pass. Somebody's a jinx up here, man. Short, uh, short pass there. That one just barely missed, I believe, Dylan Darby. That was our RPO, though, because it looks like the quarterback had the option of handing it off there, and smartly so, pulled that ball out of the uh, running back's belly. Yeah, I mean, he, he had a man over there, but the River Rats did a, a nice job of staying in position, staying with their men, and getting in there on that. But again, if you're a football player and you've been watching everybody else play, when you get in there, you, you're going to want to make a play as well. Yeah. One thirty-eight to go here, third and seven. That one hands off to Ooh, Botov. Got it. Little something for his efforts there as he crossed the line of scrimmage. That's another Sharma on the hit. And you'd hope he could wrap him up. 
because that was just a, a, sh a shiver with the shoulder. Well, watch Sharma come up here. He doesn't do anything trying to wrap the guy up. Well, and he and after he hit him, he just kind of stood there too. There, there was no follow up. Yeah. yeah. So is this another timeout by Dexter to run that clock down? Because it's third down. Third and seven, 131 to go. Seemingly timeout to try to switch out some players. Yeah, you do have 76 with one of the uh, starters and 70 come out from the offensive line. So again, get some fresh bodies out there. Yeah, getting, getting back to it. You don't want anybody getting hurt. You don't want anything chippy happening. And, and this kind of really diffuses out a lot of the emotion by taking so much time in between the play. There was actually a flag there. See the official at midfield walking backwards with the flag out of his pocket. Did he call a delay a game? That was I like a stealth flag. I never even saw that. Ninja flag. A face mask on Dexter? Maybe at the end of that play it, well, it, 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 it was thrown in the middle of the field, so the play was on the opposite side of the field. It had to be somebody blocking. Blocking nowhere near the play. Yeah. So they're walking that one off 15. Yeah, that looks more than That's 15. That's way more than 15. Yeah, Five, well, ten. that's going to catch the eye of Coach Jacobs. You can see him already out on the field. I mean, if I'm counting this off right, that's 30. So there were there two? Yeah, it did look like the official said unsportsmanlike as well okay. as a face mask. So maybe that's what precipitated the second call. Coach Jacobs, not impressed, to say the least. Not impressed. Dexter here just going to rugby kick that one away. Man, he can kick it too. That's a nice little run. And there we got a little bit of action after the play. And, and again, this is where coaches need to pull their players back and say, guys, this is not the time and place to do this. We had three other quarters to be really upset about what the other team's doing. And you can see Coach Jacobs just meandering out there. I don't think he needs to say it. He doesn't need that to look? jump up and down. The look. The look. Exactly. He's giving them the dad look. Right. He's like, I'm not impressed with the officiating. I'm not impressed with what's going on there. Let's try to just get dial this one back. Get out of here. I mean, that, that, that. <laughs> That's that 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 because I've given it to my son. <laughs> that that I'm just disappointed. I'm just disappointed. Don't have to say anything. Yeah, again, no. After the the brief pantomime with the official, just no. You you wouldn't you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know if he's he's celebrating. You don't know if he's he's angry. He's just there, very zen. Well, and he, he Coach Jacobs didn't really have an opportunity to jump on his players. They've played a solid match. Uh, right. it, it's been the officials that he's had a little irie about. He's a lot of their calls. Wells drops back. That sidearm toss into the middle. Scoots away over the intended receiver. Wells, yeah, you just, you like to see him throw. He's, he's fun. He seems like a really fun player. He just needs just a little more polish on him. Maybe a few more, uh, a few more snaps against some teams. More Another laundry. Penalty. Another penalty. And this is where the discipline or lack thereof is showing on both sides. Well, you got to think both these sides, both these sides are tired. They're Let's ready to get out of here. They're ready, They're ready to They're get tired. out of here. They've been engaged mentally and physically, right? They, they might have those stitches in their side and, and yeah, they, they see the time, they see the scoreboard, they see everything about the scoreboard. They see where the time is, they see what the score is. And, and I think that there's just that, that lack of focus in what you're doing right now. And, that, and that's the lack of focus is coming from Dexter. And that's the team that we, we were uh, just talking about how sound and fundamental and disciplined this squad was until we hit the second half of this fourth quarter. Uh, they've tossed it out. This is uh, not indicative of a, a squad that's going to go on and continue to win because uh, penalties like that will catch up with you in the wrong time. Well, and we're about halfway through the season right now, so there's there's still room to be improved, and there's still uh, things to build on. This That's just one of those things. There's Wells getting right after his man. This Fry? Yeah, Fry. Fry had his man beat, heading towards the corner. And that's where Wells needs to put a little bit more air on that ball, toss it towards the pylon, and let your receiver run up under it. 
Well, with his motion, like there's only so much submarine action you can do to get something like that you're talking. That that rainbow throw is just really tough to do with the arm action that he has on it. And you can see here, look at that, and it floats on him as well too. He's running that way, so his momentum is going that way as well. So it's difficult, like you say, to have a pinpoint pass yeah, still, with such a funky motion. Yeah, still a, still a pretty solid effort and a, a nice job of uh, Fry to get open down in the corner. Wells back looking, four wide, looking way downfield. Finds a man up front, but that one is caught and intercepted by Davis Taylor. Taylor turns it up, stiff arm. And that is one more big play by the Dreadnought defense. As we've seen all night long. And as we've man, seen so much that. gong time. It's hard not to like that, right? Yeah, I mean, that's because that's, that's it's unique, too. Yeah. I've not seen the gong. No, I've, no gong I've yet. seen some turnover chains and, you know, some bling on the sideline. They're not like a, a, a big gold key, though. No, well, what's going to be? It, I mean, it's real tough to beat that. Yeah. Man, fired that one in, but just into traffic. And Davis Taylor get, comes up and gets that one. So it, it kind of looks like uh, these guys are going to go ahead and drop some knees down because you see they're getting in that victory position. I love this formation because it made you remember what has transpired the entire game. And that uh, for Dexter, Coach Jacobs is still upset. He wants that clock to be running. He's upset that the clock hasn't been started yet. Actually, Huron is running a man off the field. Thankfully, the officials are not going to drop a flag for an extra man on the field. And I don't even know if uh, you know, Dexter will probably have to take one more snap, wait down to about 35 seconds. And then that should do it for tonight's matchup. So many gongs. This second half has just been filled with turnovers and gongs for the Dreadnoughts as they take their final knee, 25 seconds remaining. Our final score is gonna end up being 55 to 29 as the two teams come together and they're clapping hands. We're gonna take a short break and we'll be right back with Nick with our key player of the game. Hey folks, I hope you like what you're watching. And if you do, hit that little like button and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at A2CTN Sports. And here we go on the field, key player of the game, Cooper Arnett. Cooper, tell me first a little bit about that second quarter and all of the offense that you helped orchestrate. I mean, I think everything was just clicking, you know. The O-line was giving me time in there and I mean, everyone was making plays. I didn't really have to do too much. Uh, low key, that's outstanding, but we've talked about as a sophomore, just your composure in there. Tell us how important that is in making the offense and getting forward on that. I mean, I just don't, I try to not worry about anything else, just play and just score. I mean, just give my teammates a chance to do something with the ball. So I just kind of try and block out everything else. And you keep talking about your teammates, all around team effort, obviously. The big thing that we talked about tonight also, the gong. I know that's not for you guys, yeah. but explain that one to us and where's that one at? I mean, it's the defense that just brings energy to them. And I mean, props to them. They played an amazing game today. I mean, I think they probably, they were credited for like at least half of our points. And the gong just brings energy and I just, I love it. Team effort all around, exactly what you want in your quarterback as well. Willing to give these props to everybody else. Kevin, back up to you. Great job, Nick. And good job for you too. Quarterback Arnett, our key player of the game. The Dreadnoughts will walk away, will run away with a W here at Riverbank Stadium. Next week, we'll see the same Dexter Dreadnoughts as they venture and finish off their tour of Ann Arbor at Skyline High. 
So for Nick Wesnitsky, I'm Kevin Bryant. For the next time we see you on CTN Sports, good night, everyone. You know what else they keep on the top shelf besides the goals? What's that, man? Peanut butter. Mmm.